Beware of spoilers. The following podcast discusses uh, the short story Princess and the Queen by George R. R. Martin in full detail. Hello everyone, welcome to a best VOK ever. We have a treat for you. We are reviewing the and discussing the best short story ever, written by the best author, George R. R. Martin. I am Vikram, I go by as 42 on the forums. And joining me for this podcast are Duncan, the best podcaster from Australia. <laughs> the only podcaster from Australia. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Val Christ on the forums. Hey, nice to see everyone. Nadia, the best podcaster from Pakistan. <laughs> I don't know how many podcasters there are in Pakistan. <laughs> Bina, the best podcaster. No, she's the second best podcaster from UK, but the best podcaster oh. from Britain. Wow, that, that's harsh. Well, Glenn's that's really harsh. harsh. Sorry, Glenn's that's the rough. best podcaster. Uh, Glenn's, Glenn's the best, po- best podcaster from Scotland, right? I'm about, I'm about to leave the podcast immediately. <laughs> Glenn, is, Glenn is Irish, isn't he? <laughs> Glenn's no, he's, Scottish. He's, Scottish. he's Scottish. He's Scottish. Oh wow, that's embarrassing. Okay, uh, FT <laughs> Ward. Uh, then we have FT Ward, the best podcaster from Midwest. Thank you. I don't know if it's true or not, but thank you. Then Mikhail, the best podcaster from East Coast. Woohoo! He gets rain <laughs> on the forums. Wait. <laughs> and then are you from the East Coast, Lee? Yeah. Well, oh well, you're not here now, so suck it. <laughs> yeah, that's because Mike Lee is the best podcaster from Russia. Hey everybody. Hey it's Lee. Lee, Lee do you want... Lee, I think we should form a successionist group. Like we're the second best, so we should like usurp power from these so called best I people. Agree. And I agree completely. I think we should become like that we should become the Greens. Let's do it. Let's say we're the blacks. Let's say that we have the yeah. the legitimacy. You're outside the <laughs> okay, capital. Cool. So screw it. Okay, like so we're gonna dial off now. We're gonna do our own podcast and we're gonna yeah. put it out. Like five minutes before your podcast and claim legitimacy. <laughs> so suck it, people. Mm-hmm. Well, we have FT Ward here, so we have legitimacy. <laughs> I don't think I've ever podcasted with FT Ward before. This is exciting. It is kind of exciting. Yeah, man. Uh, you're a forum regular. Glad to have you on the podcast, finally. Thanks. Yeah, he's legit. Um, <laughs> I doubt that. FT Ward is like the king of the forums. <laughs> Aren't you the the leader in the forums, Lee? I think. Yeah, but yeah, we exiled him. So. Quality <laughs> over quality. You are quality over quantity, and you definitely got the quality. Well, at we okay, we do value quantity over quality. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hence this podcast. <laughs> That's why we have so many hosts, right? <laughs> Seven mm-hmm. hosts. The second uh, most, uh, yeah, second most host we had on a podcast. So after reading this story, did, did anybody else crave for a dragon? Did anybody else want a dragon really badly? No. <laughs> no. 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 I am I... horrible. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to kill them. So they're like yeah, they're awful. dinosaurs. Oh man, I don't know. I really wanted a dragon. I wanted one. I wanted a dragon, I was going to call it Spitfire, F-I-R-E. <laughs> oh, I sort of wanted one, but one that was like the lady of, of dragons. So like very calm and very like would listen to me, which probably wouldn't happen. I feel like none of the dragons are like that at all. But we never really saw one like doing doing something like with its master. Like he goes on for a little while about how like, oh, they have this bond and blah, blah, blah. But like I don't know, the mechanics of that are still kind of confusing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I like, get the sense that they're pretty nasty always. Like how did Vega ended up with the Aemon, right? I mean, Vega's like the, the most powerful dragon at the time. How did Aemon, you know, tame it or something? <laughs> yeah. And then I good guess, Queen Alison ends up with Ulf the Sot or whatever. So I don't exactly. know. Exactly. That... Yeah, yeah, but yeah, who can you... know the heart of a dragon? So, <laughs> as we're told, like, 18 Maester, times. Yeah. <laughs> so, before we go on and give our um, lemon cake ratings, or blood cake ratings, or blood and cheese ratings, <laughs> uh, which side are you guys on? We want to pick out any traitors if we have any. Oh, you can be green, you can be black, and if you're not too sure, you can be dark greenish or light greenish also. Uh, I'm on Team Roderick. 
Whatever team he's fighting for, I'm on his team. The guy's yeah. a beast. Yes. How about you, Nadia? Uh, I was with the Blacks in the beginning, but then the kid murdering thing happened. Um, so I'd probably go with Jace. He seemed pretty decent. I don't know if that's, that counts as Black. Well, Jace is... Uh, yeah, Jace is Black, right? Yeah. How, how about you, Lee? For me? Um... I don't know. I definitely, of the main claimants, like the Queens and the Kings, I think the Greens are better. But all the supporters of the Blacks are better because they're Starks and Flints and the Valerians are awesome. So I definitely lean to... Plus, any side the Betrayers switch to is a bad side. And I don't like High Towers or Terrells. So I'm a, I'm a Black, I think. Uh, Mikhail? Um, I'm Team Blacks, um, which just, if you're American, sounds really, really awkward. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I think it really is complicated, and that's one of the things I want to talk about with the whole blood and cheese issue. But, I mean, I just don't see any legitimacy in the Greens, other than Allison being like, make my son king, and I'm sorry, but I'm not going to go with, a son must needs come before a daughter. So, you know, that doesn't sway me exactly. <laughs> Uh, Duncan, you already went, right? You said the. Uh, I guess well, in the beginning, I was with the blacks in principle because the greens just seemed so. Their their entire rationale was just political motivation, whereas the the blacks had a kind of legitimacy in declaration, and people swore to uphold this uh, right of inheritance. Um, but uh, after the blood and cheese thing, after she started allowing children to be butchered uh, in her name, then I just. Yeah, I just wanted all the Targaryens out after that point. They were they were all as bad as each other. And their dragons yeah. are just massacring the human yeah, race. Yeah, can I be they on just that team? Wiped up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Screw them all. I'm, I'm for <laughs> Team Republic because they're yeah, all I'm selfish bastards. And their claims are all kind of, you know, okay, so superficially the blacks have a better claim. But at the end of the day, let's be real about power. It's all about do you have a valid line of succession? And because of the doubt about the parentage of her kids, you know, and it's just, you've got these dragons, it's like nuclear holocaust everywhere. It sucks. So I, I don't want any dragons and any Targaryens. And for the first time, I'm just so with the maesters and anyone who's anti-magics. Mm. I will so, say, though, yeah, um, yeah with, um, I'd like to switch to that team. <laughs> I will say that this might be the worst era of the Targaryens and it obviously goes down even worse from here but the previous king or the king before the previous king was uh, Jaehaerys and good queen Alicent or Al Alicent I think and they were amazing they did like incredible sort of setting up infrastructure for the yeah they abolished the, the first kings. night thing also right they set up the king's yeah. row they set up new castles for the watch they visited each um each of their kind of wardens like systematically they went all around Westeros checking in on everyone uh they just they settled disputes they that, that's the point they maintain peace and that's the sign of a good king but the sign of a bad king is starting wars so these are the bad kings see that's why i can't be on team green because they really like like every atrocity that happens obviously has like an initial has somebody whose fault it is but this all goes back to allison being like i want my son to be king and Kristen cole you know ensuring that everybody went along with that so it's hard for me to to be like, well, you guys actually started this, so I certainly can't be in your team. I think Team Small Folk might be a, a legitimate one. <laughs> yeah. uh, how hmm. about you, Thomas? Uh, yeah, I guess for just intellectual consistency, I would be for the Blacks because I'm for Stannis, and I'd feel like I was cheating if I wasn't for the Blacks. <laughs> but uh, in, in actuality, in the form thread, I said I'm for the sheep. And I like the shepherd who kind of led the Small Folk to the dragon pit and just killed all those dragons so i would be also for like the small folk here well yeah. there's an for me uh there's an ancient valerian saying roast before host <laughs> <laughs> so i'm kind of leaning towards the greens but the blacks have just so many badasses right i mean damon even the queen who never was rainies i mean damon is so... not a badass uh yeah he can stay <laughs> no, no, it was indirectly, in, indirectly, right? Oh, oh, okay. So that's us. Well, then, 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 then who's the guy? Eamon. Eamon, even, Eamon killed uh, Luke, who's 14, so he's a baby, yeah. too, so. Eamon, Eamon killed hundreds of babies. Yeah. Oh, yes, fine, but if somebody kills your baby, you don't, you go out and kill that person, not yeah. a baby. Yeah. No, it was so, it was so. We it was actually like the weakest thing. It was just I mean, first of all, well I guess we'll talk about it. But 
I don't know. Should I go into this now? Or, no, or... no, just get going. You know, it's not. <laughs> yeah, I like it. this <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, not only did he orchestrate this through other people, which is just like, I'm sorry, but like, I mean, there's there's no valor in that at all. But strategically, really it was just so stupid. It was, you know, I mean, if you can if you can sneak two guys into the Red Keep and kidnap and 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 you know, murder a child, then you can kidnap those children and be like, okay, we have these kids getting them out of the city, and now you have to end the war because we have your heir and daughter and son. I mean, I don't like, know if that's fair. No, but just I because think... you can, just because you can get in somewhere doesn't mean you can get out. But they had all the tunnels. I mean, like, obviously it would be more difficult, but, like, what what da- Damon's whole plan was, like, literally, like, pointless. It was not, there was no, mm. there was no, like, logic to it. There was no, none of the, you know, whatever, whatever the, the good rules of war are. It was in complete violation of any kind of fairness or yeah. moderation. It was just, it was awful. Yeah, yeah that was no... It was cruel well, and it was awful, but... I don't know if they could have snuck him out. And it's the same as, like, I don't know, if they could have killed Aegon, I think they would have, but they couldn't get to him, so they went... Like, I, I'm, like, I'm playing devil's advocate here. It was one of the most horrifying parts of the book, and it's one of the reasons that I don't really want to side with anybody, because these people are all terrible. But from his perspective, like, they've killed one of your heirs. Killing one of theirs just sort of proves that you're every bit as serious as they are, and just because you can send someone in doesn't mean they can get out. But it's still insane and the horrific. The cheese got out somehow. We don't know they got out. They're probably dead. Well, there's I, also I, the I, thing, I right, that Aim, what Eamon did is totally uncalled for. I mean, the guy came in, Luke came in as an envoy. There was no reason to go after him or anything, right? I mean, when, you know, when he challenged him, he said, I came as an envoy. I'm not going to fight you. He took all the insults and left. So Eamon is the one to yep. blame here, and and everybody outside will look at it and think, oh no, Eamon was ordered to kill this kid or something. So, and I think the Maester does this thing right afterwards. He starts referring Eamon as the Kingslayer, just like we we do it with uh, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think Jamie. I think the, but Eamon strikes the, me as being. Sorry, I think the Blacks would have had greater sympathy if they hadn't have retaliated. They would have carried favor with all of the lords because they they one of their heirs would have been killed unprovoked. Or they would have looked weak. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but they you don't look strong. Killed Eamon. Yeah, no, they should have killed Eamon. Them. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, they should have. Viserys and Arian Brightfire kind of guy. I was going to say that, he's, yeah. He's crazy. Yeah. In the sense that he's just a bag of shit. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I think he's more competent and. He's more intelligent, a, maybe. Yeah. 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 And, and but it's. Do, well, I was just going to say, you know, it was interesting how everything got started, right? I mean, uh, obviously, Queen Rihanna. <laughs> well, uh, Queen Rhaenys. Rhaenyra, sorry. Uh, uh. <laughs> Actually, can I ask a question before we get into the book? Sure. Can I just ask what everyone's lemon cake rating is? Is that really too obvious a question? No, no, Are you no, guys of course, no. of course. <laughs> Of course, yeah. So let's go through the order again. Uh, Nadia, how about you? Uh, I'd give it a four. It was it was very, very fast. I mean, there wasn't a lot of details. But I, I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed how, you know, it conveyed the absolute brutality of the dragons. Um, how destructive they can actually be, which we haven't really seen so far. Mm. Uh, Lee? So I enjoyed it. Me? Um, as like a work of fiction like as something well okay no, you know what no that's not true so i listened to it so my impression's a little different because it's influenced by bina's heavenly voice but for me i'd give it a solid four and a half i listen it was really fun i enjoyed every second of it and the story was excellent will i enjoy it as much when i read it possibly not but certainly the listening experience was fantastic Oh, thank you. Does, does that include You're... the background noise of Adelaide Airport Lounge? Well, that <laughs> the was cheesy only... soft saxophone that music. Just one part. I could live with that. I could live with that. You're, I mean, you're a great narrator. You should narrate all of my books. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Can you imagine if I tried to narrate Dance with Dragons, it would take like eight years. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be a lot. This was, how many pages is this? Oh, this was only 80 pages, I think. 80, 80 On the Kindle, pages. at least. So, Thank you. You put in a lot of effort to do this. Uh, Mikhail? Oh, Sorry, by the way, am I saying your name right? <laughs> um, no, but that's okay. 
It's a, <laughs> Nobody. Time. That's all right. No, it's, wait, it's Mikhail. No, Mikhail. <laughs> Mikhail. Mikhail. Okay, got it. Yeah, no aisle, just all. Uh, okay. Is it? Is it? It's a Slavic name of some kind, I assume. No, it's Hebrew. Hebrew. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so. Um. Yeah. I mean, I listened to it also with the dulcet tones of Ian Glenn. Not quite as good as Bina's voice, but still. <laughs> um. I. I think. Yeah. Right. <laughs> She's above the trees. Um. I think. Yeah, I'd give it probably a four. Not. I mean. I don't I don't hold this to like the same standards as I would hold like a Dunkin egg or you know definitely not you know the series proper because it's not meant to be like a story story and I thought it was really entertaining for what for even you know despite that in the way it was told um so I really did enjoy it I honestly like some of the stuff I was by the end and like after like the 60,000th Targaryen had died I was just like George for god's sake seriously um, but yeah, no, I enjoyed it a lot and I would recommend people read it. Uh, Duncan? Uh, yeah, I was a little mixed. Um, probably give it three lemon cakes. I enjoyed reading it at the time, but I think, uh, that was more to do with like this wealth of backstory and history the story provides. Um, and it's, yeah, it is definitely a really awesome and tragic and epic story, but I think I found myself like oddly detached and even bored during large sections of it. Um, because there aren't really characters in the thing. It's more just a series of names, like hundreds and hundreds of names and titles and places with kind of vague character traits. Um, so without that sort of sense of, you know, emotional connection to characters, I, I didn't really feel like there was as much sort of stakes in these really epic battles, which are like wonderfully viscerally described. And you can get a lot out of that. But um, ultimately, these really long descriptions of troop movements and uh, skirmishes in the Riverlands didn't hold as much weight as, say, you know, Dun- Sir Duncan and, and the knight fighting in the mud at the end of um, the Sworn Sword. I think the best, th- the best parts are sort of when it zooms in on a particular incident, like the Blood and Cheese incident or the big dragon battle over Harrenhal or the riots in King's Landing. Um, because you do feel this real sense of danger and like personal stakes for the people involved. Um, so as a work of storytelling, I was pretty mixed, but as like this really detailed info dump on Westerosi history, I think it was really enjoy- enjoyable. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's like a Michael Bay version of uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, would, I would gladly read like a seven book version of this. Yeah. I feel like it's massive. Well, it's, I do a trilogy. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. It's like it's not over yet. It doesn't end where the book ends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we still have to see how Aegon the Third uh, defeated Aegon the Second, right? Yeah, Aegon, Aegon the Younger ends up the king. Um, Good. B- Bina. Yeah, um, everything Duncan said really. Um, it's it's a huge data dump, which means it's quite challenging because these are potentially fascinating characters, but we don't really have the time to get to know any of them too well. So it does just mean you're a bit, or for me, I was a lot less attached to the outcomes of any of these battles. And by the end, it became, you know, like when you watch um, Scott Pilgrim and there's this, you know, he's got to defeat the seven deadly ex-boyfriends. And I was just kind of like, how many more dragons do we have to kill before the end of this thing? Yeah, I actually got quite bored of it. Yeah, uh, I was like, I just, I'm not invested in any of these these cool creatures because it's just so fast. It's like suddenly this guy's gone from being this test match cricketer novelist, being really patient in Dance of Dragons, to suddenly being IPL on total speed, like rattling through. So, yeah, I'd give it a two out of five. <laughs> I don't really understand what that means. <laughs> Half the world didn't get the reference. <laughs> I yeah, think... well, half the, wo- half the world No, I got it, I got it. Enjoy the card and watch the cricket. So, Test Cricket is watch played over uh, five days. IPL is a 20-over game, so it takes place only in, like, three hours or something. So, that's fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I loved, uh, I loved the political allegory, and I loved um, a lot of the horror stuff that George R. R. Martin does really well, like, so the blood and cheese, and that was all brilliant, but yeah, I, it was great to get the information. I think I'll use it as a kind of Wikipedia of ancient history, but will I go back and necessarily read it again for pleasure as a reading experience, literarily? Maybe not, so. Uh, Thomas? Uh, yeah, I was pretty disappointed originally when we, when they announced we were going to get this instead of a Dunkin' Egg. So I had pretty low expectations, um, and I, I think it's it's it parts very well written. I think there are, are parts like uh, when someone said when he zooms in, and actually goes into some detail, it's very well written. But I feel like a lot of it has been edited out to fit into this uh, into this book, which I don't think was the best yeah. format for it. 
So I, I think I would give it a four or something like that. And I, I think in parts of it, like I said, I think some of the stuff in the Riverlands is, is just like Heart of Darkness, just so good. Horror stuff, kind of yeah. horror war stuff. But uh, overall, it, it is just a lot of recitation that isn't always engaging, I guess. So I, I would give it a four. Huh. So either I have the worst taste or the best taste because I would give it five out of five. <laughs> Yeah, wow. I, I don't know. This was like perfect to me. I mean, this is like this concentrated, packed uh, load of story, you know. I mean, everything's happening. There's tons of twists and turns. There's more blood and violence than the, you know, the War of the Fire Kings. I mean, this has more violence than all of Song, Songs of Ice and Fire, right? I mean... I agree, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's it's very interesting. I, I really liked it. And after, you know, sitting through A Feast for Crows and A Dance for Dragons, I'm glad Martin can still do one of these things. I think the guy just went crazy. I think he just went berserk. You know, it's like, I'll kill you, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. Oh, Begar, I'll kill you. Dreamfire, I'll kill you. Sunfire, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> It's like yeah. he kills everything, and I think he's just Martin just went free. I think I think he just went, yeah. I think he just I think he did not write it for anybody. He think, I think he just wrote it for himself. He was just trying out all sorts of things, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I will say that I like I agree. It wasn't as interesting as you know as a proper story but not I'm, I'm not someone who's hugely interested in the Targaryen backstory and this made me interested in what I was reading about because like I, before this I like even even listening to the title you know when he was reading it like oh an account of the dance of the dragons I was like okay whatever but this actually made me like made the conflict come alive a lot more and even though we didn't get an in-depth look at all of the characters I mean, I'm almost grateful for that because what we did get was like heartbreaking. So I don't think I could have gotten any closer. Like if I knew ab all about Helena Targaryen's life and her wishes and dreams and whatever, I probably would have just like lost it. And I listened to this while I was driving. So it was really not, that was not good. I was like, yeah. Um, but for, for what it, for what it did tell me, like I'm interested in reading more of these, you know, not as info dumps, but as kind of like peeks into the history you know that that kind of both humanize and keep that distance <laughs> i think it, well i'm kind of hypocritical because i definitely can't wait until the it's definitely wet my appetite for the worlds of ice and fire like i want to just devour all of this backstory and all of this history but at the same time i kind of like the a song of ice and fire style where it's um, you're you're getting this information in dribs and drabs, and you, as the reader, it's up to you to actually sort of forage around this information and piece it together in your head to form a cohesive narrative. Whereas here, they're basically just plonking it in front of you, fully formed, completely objective, completely overarching. Like I'm, I much prefer the more subjective, uh, character-based, localized perspective of history, where everything is filtered through family loyalties and religious and cultural beliefs and uh, political ambition. Like I like that more subjective. Um, idea of history yeah i agree i think that's one of the charms of the main novels and it was almost too easy like we really have to work for the truth of what happens in in the novels and here it was just like okay so this is what happened these were the exact people who were present and by the way this bit's a bit sketchy and we're going to tell you that this maester says that and that that person says the other and it was just almost too easy and part of the fun of this fandom is you know coming together as a hive mind to figure out what really went down so yeah, yeah, I think maybe. I think so sorry. No, carry on. I think something like Robert's Rebellion is far more interesting learning about it from in the sort of from all the, these other different characters who fought on different sides of the conflicts and people who have only heard bits and pieces of information and people who have uh, wrong information and sort of distorted truths and myths. So it, it builds this far more interesting narrative of the backstory, the immediate backstory of A Song of Ice and Fire, as opposed to this, which is just this overarching, completely objective beginning middle and end conflicts there's no room for that kind of mysticism and mythologizing that you get with something like robert's rebellion do you guys but think is it, it completely was completely objective, objective? Though? yeah that's what i, was I don't say. think so no. I think well this is written by a maester and maesters at don't various like dragons, points and dragons yeah. come out as really douchey in this yeah you can tell it's not objective just from the riot in king's landing like if this was if this was a real targaryen sympathizer he wouldn't be like well yeah. you know like sometimes the rioters are sort of right. He would have been like, no, they're like peasants and they're monsters and they were drunk and they killed all the beautiful, lovely dragons who defended themselves. Well, I, th I thought it kind of went the other way because at one point yeah. he um, he's talking about the first night and exactly, how, how the, the peasants couldn't 
the peasants couldn't understand the honor being done to them. Yeah, they were jealous of the happy yeah. bastards and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I think he's pretty pro green, other than the one eye stuff. I and I, th- I think he's very mournful about the loss of the dragons. He yeah, describes it as so. the dying of the dragons. Yeah, and yeah. he keeps mm-hmm. talking about the small folk as like rats overcoming and fleas, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe Roaches, it's yeah. very possible that Bina's feelings <laughs> sort of overwhelmed the actual. <laughs> <laughs> blame the narrator. Yeah, well, sorry, I, I, I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna blame this one yeah, on that, you. Yeah, that's then. that's my power. Lee. I, 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 my narration is so powerful. I can actually bend the meaning of actual words. <laughs> it's it's true. To my will. She's not, she's that is the love of my magic. Well, that's actually something interesting. I do think that this might work better listening to it because it is told as a chronicle, and you do get that voice that, like, as you know, objective or not as it is, keeps coming in and you know, kind of resetting the stage. And I think, I like, listening be. to my best friend Ian Glenn, you know, talk about yeah. all this, but it, you know, it, it kind of made, it made me feel like I was being told a story as opposed to just, like, reading, like, a dry history. This, I, mm-hmm. I'd love to see it as, like, maybe a one-hour anime or something. Like, have any of you guys seen the Animatrix? One the, hour? Well, 30 minutes, oh, yeah, I have I've, I've seen the Animatrix, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because that's what I kept envisioning when they were sort of describing it, this slow kind of descent into madness and carnage and bloodshed. Oh, you mean like a one-hour episode? I thought you meant like one hour total. No. Well, no, yeah, like a one-hour total narration from beginning to end. This summation oh, man, I feel like you could do this. I feel like you could do a whole show. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't. Uh, so, <laughs> so more on, mostly I'm hearing from you guys, you kind of, you know, you, this is not your preferred way of getting information. But, you know, from what I read from org forums, the world, the the book, uh, the world book, Ice and Fire, the one that Martin and uh, is gonna write, that's gonna be like the encyclopedia of stuff. That's gonna be in this style, and actually, this story would have belonged there, it seems. And I think more of the s- details on the story is actually gonna be in there. I think so. That's gonna have a lot of those stuff. So, what do you guys think? You're gonna not gonna enjoy that book as much now? I, I heard mm-hmm. that he was actually going to. This is actually twenty or thirty thousand words of a like ninety thousand word yeah, story. It's... And he's actually going like to release it. I'd like to read all of it. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. I heard he's everything's going to be its... told like this now. I mean, the the entire book is going to be like this. I heard he's actually going to release it separately, separate from World of Ice and Fire, the 90,000 word version of the story. And it's called going to be called like the G-R-R-M Marillion or something. <laughs> 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 more money. <laughs> yeah, more money. <laughs> People are willing to buy the wit and wisdom of Tyrion Lannister. I'm sure yeah, people will buy everything. <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> don't knock it. <laughs> um, but I, I just think it's all about expectations because with the worlds of ice and fire, it's being set up as a kind of compendium and encyclopedia that you can sort of dip into. And so I don't mind it being more of a data dump. Whereas this was kind of, this is in a book of short stories instead of a Duncan Egg. So I kind of maybe expected it to be a bit more on the character and narrative uh, rather than just on the kind of chronicles. So it's all about the packaging. I, I won't not enjoy the worlds of ice and fire. That, that's probably in the rest of the 60,000 words. Hmm. I don't know. I bet the rest of the 60,000 words is the detail. We get so little detail in this. Exactly. Yeah. More exactly true how so... all these people died. Well, yeah. No. We don't talk about like. We we'll never hear about Sir Eric and Sir Eric in this. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, There's all kinds. I feel like that's the first thing we ever heard about. The dance was was referenced to those two guys. And the, those were the twins, in, right? Who the twins uh, who killed fought each on the other. opposite sides. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Like died, on, died on each other's swords. You also like the metaphor. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't believe. We also that need like a, a lot more information on Kristen Cole, right? I mean. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 What the yeah, heck? Yeah, we do. Though it's presumed that he's some jealous bro who used to be banging the queen, so. Yeah, we got more characterization from him in that one sentence in A Feast for Crows than we <laughs> exactly. do in this entire story. Yeah. <laughs> well, he did, you know, murder an 80-year-old man where he sat, so that was But that's not, that's of... not characterization, though. That's not, like, his internal kind of psychology. That's yeah. just okay. a thing he did. Someone else. <laughs> Speaking of characters, did you guys have favorites, anti-favorites? Obviously. Is anyone's favorite, favorite not Buddy the Raven? Uh, he's not my favorite. I, I don't. Oh, I love him. <laughs> I love any mention of the Starks during I the guess... part of their reign. It's so good. Wait, is this is a real question? Is Roderick a Stark? I thought he was a a Dustin. No, he's a Dustin. Yeah, Dustin. No, he's a Dustin. Yeah. Yeah. My he, feeling he on him. Stark, thank God. I feel like if we got a a this this story of the War of the Five Kings, like 150 years in the future, 
like the Gregor Clegane would be kind of like Roddy the Ruin. That that just the just outlines of what he does are kind of badass. Yeah. But I, I seriously doubt. I mean, like in his first battle, he just runs all his troops into the into the Lannisters and gets like just people killed time after time. I, I feel like he's he's probably not anyone worth liking, but uh, I I see that I see why there would be an appeal there though. That's yeah. true. All the badasses are like you know, Aemon uh, Targaryen, Daemon Targaryen, <laughs> Rhaenys uh, Targaryen. So you know, it's all those big berserkers and not. <laughs> And not I saw Roger ones. Moore as like a great John Umber kind of guy. Yeah, me too. The, the whole thing guys... where he, sorry, oh, he's no, go ahead. Blood, he's fighting through. He loses his arm, and then he still kills the guy while laughing. Uh, so, so is what he drunk? Beast. Do you think all the time? Is that the way? He... I, I, I have to get bloodlust. <laughs> yeah, I think he's like yeah, it's blood Viking lust. kind of drunk on. Yeah. But that's I... just the way I read it. I love this impression we get of the Northmen in this story, that the fact that yeah. there's so little sort of dialogue between the Southern Kingdoms and the Northern Kingdoms, and the only time they get any contact is when the Northern Cavalry just starts thundering down the causeway and just wastes through hosts ten times their size. It's such a great yeah. impression we get of the Northmen and, and the Starks they are so loyal to. And then there's Actually, also the Manderleys who escort the Queen yeah. out of the city and took care of the city during the riots, right? Yeah, they're, they're still fat. I was going to say. I thought just one of them, though. Isn't just one of them fat? Yeah, one was thin. Fat? Maybe he's yeah. the one who carried on the line. <laughs> yeah. I actually what did you guys think of? Most character is um, Bela Targaryen. Who? Bela, the one um, on Moondancer. Yeah. The one who takes oh, on yeah. Aiden. Sunfire, yeah. The giant stone. Yeah, I mean, she's a 13-year-old girl with a really tiny dragon, and she takes on this, you know, the other king. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a pretty cool battle. Yeah. I wish Before I wish we, we got more information on Nettles. She seemed kind of interesting, but we only got a couple yeah. of seconds. Yeah, so shall we talk about her? Because, yeah, uh, just do we just want to do everyone's... I'm sorry. Here. No, well, we I, just... I think I heard somewhere that Elio said that we'd, we'll see her somewhere else. Yeah, he did say that. I would yeah, think because so. Because it's one of the surviving dragons, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but what do you think? Alice is, is Nettle a tag bastard or is it just a random person? Wait, before we dive into Nettles, I was gonna say real quick about the Northmen. Um, so like I had this brief meta writing phase on Tumblr, and I had this one thing about how everyone talks about winter is coming, the North remembers, like it's super positive, positive. and I was making the argument that the Northmen remembering their roots is not a good thing. And I feel like this story is huge, huge, like, corroboration of that point. Like, as cool as Roddy the Ruin is, like, you don't really want the Starks to remember those days. And you don't really need the North to be like, you know what, let's go back into full, like, drunken psychopath mode. Oh, I was just gonna, I think it's happening, yeah. What were you going to say? I think it works. The reason I think it's positive is because you get the flip side where, uh, let me re rephrase, the Starks are so utterly, everyone is in the North is so utterly devoted to the Starks. Their power is absolute and everything is centralized around them. And compare that to what we're getting now in the Dance with Dragons, where loyalties are so uncertain. There is no idea of inheritance rights. There is no uh, idea of who you're loyalty to. Your loyalty to your own political ambitions, your own wealth, your own greed. And that's what sort of splits everything apart. That's what shatters kingdoms and all of these sort of beggar knights and, um, and peasant kings sort of sprout up. And it's like every man for himself. And you get all these robber barons and the, the, land, the, the realm is just torn asunder. Whereas you don't get that in the north because everyone is so devoted to the Starks because they've been there for so long. They're not like the Targaryens where they've only been there for 100 years. They've right. been there for thousands and thousands of years. And, and they have this centralized thing and everyone helps each other. You know, the north is the north. It's a cohesive whole. Whereas the southern kingdoms are always at each other's throats. And I think uh, uh, when Damon says that let's get rid of the Lannisters and the Storm Lords and replace them with uh, uh, who's the guy, uh, you know, Hugh the Hammer and yeah. uh, and what's the other guy? Wolf Adam the Sot. The... Uh, yeah, Wolf the White or something. <laughs> uh, what was it? Uh, the Valerion guy. Uh, he, he opposes it and says, hey, if you replace the Lannisters and the Storm Lords, I mean, they're, they're going to rebel. So they have a similar thing, what the Starks mm. have at the North, right? I agree. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. I, I, think I think that's, that's just class. Yeah. yeah. I, I just class. don't think they like want to raise up these kind of bastards to high lords. But the, and you get it's other also, families like the Tyrells and the Tullys who aren't really given much credence in this story. I mean, yeah. the Hightowers are the big 
the big wigs in the reach. Uh, mm-hmm. The Tyrells aren't really considered that powerful because they've just been instated by the Targaryens, you know, a couple of hundred years ago. They're stewards. The same with the Tullys. They're not the true power in the in the Riverlands. That was the Iron Men. Um, so they're not really. They don't have much centralized power. Whereas the Starks are so yeah. absolute in their in their command of the North. So even if um even if some of their tactics are very savage, um it's a far more stable region because of that. True. Can true. we talk about how but, between this and the first Duncan Egg story, the Baratheons seem like total assholes? The Baratheons are frequently <laughs> assholes. When is a Baratheon not an asshole? This is a good point. I do not they're, have. They've got all that answer. tarred blood. They're shitty. Yeah. <laughs> Targaryens are shitty. Come on, where's Team Stannis? Come on, Team Stannis. Uh, I, <laughs> if you want to call, I love yeah. Stannis. Stannis uh, if you want to call him an Stannis. asshole, that's fine. He doesn't care. I kind of <laughs> sympathize a little bit. The fact that he's just being this cat's paw between these two families. Yeah, like, they're, they're I, like I, they're like an ancient house. I mean, obviously the, the Targaryens the married into it. No, no. I'm, obviously, they married into the Storm the Storm Kings. Uh, but they're they're in essence an ancient house, and they're just being used as this pawn between these two things. So they want respect. They don't want to be treated like this. You know, they have some pride. Actually, the Baratheons are not that old, right? I mean, they came along yeah, with yeah. Aegon the Targaryen. They married into the Storm Kings. They oh, married, they married the Storm Kings, right? Which yeah. is I think ancient. Luke should have just ex- just took one of his daughters for a wife, and that or would have... or he could have suggested Aegon the Third uh, could marry yeah. one of them, right? I mean, even Joffrey, I don't think was betrothed to anybody yet. So. I mean, that was his mother's fault. She didn't give him the right. She didn't give him the right, like, what? bargaining power. He's a kid. He couldn't agree yeah, to that on his own. he's 14. I mean, you can't, yeah, you she, can't blame him exactly. for, like, his In... first diplomatic mission not thinking what? on his feet so much. Well, I think once He's like the was... Quentin of the story. He set up no. to fail. <laughs> Quentin's alive! <laughs> yeah, she was too confident in the uh, in the sort of loyalty to the Baratheons. She hadn't even considered they would stray because they supported her, uh, or they supported the line of the females uh, as equals in the previous council. Um, but ultimately, it's uh, Prince Damon's fault. Like he could have gone sure. home. The, the the conflict could have remained peaceful. It could have been a war of of ravens and letters at that point, as they say. But ultimately, it was Damon's decision to turn this into a war of blood. So ultimately, everything you mean rests Damon. on his blame. Eamon, sorry. Yes, sorry, yeah. Eamon. Yeah, Prince Eamon. Eamon. Yeah, the guy the was... Thing is... Sorry. <laughs> um, the thing is, I forgot what I was going to say. I mean, I, I, I sympathize with the difficulty of marrying off four daughters. Don't get me wrong. But I don't really see the benefit of like, okay, so now one out of four is married and you're giving all of your strength to the, the people that have less of a claim on your loyalties than, than the blacks. You know, I just I didn't... Th- it, that is true, but it's not like I think he actually he, it's gave a any respect of his strength thing, anybody. I think. Yes, it was a be, respect thing. Yeah. He just can't accept a worse deal, I, I don't think. I mean, I think he would have accepted, if, if I get him confused now, Luke would have had uh, accepted his offer. I think he would have went with the, the blacks, or the greens. Or the blacks, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's, it seemed like One he gave the, them a chance, at least. Yeah. yeah. One of the, regardless of who won the civil war, it pretty much had a devastating effect on House Targaryen. They've That's lost fun. this, they've severed this connection with House Baratheon, who were their one of their most staunch allies since the conquest, um, and they've yeah, also they- lost their aerial sort of supremacy, the dragons that that sort of bound all of the realm together, and also House Valerian, which was basically their supremacy at sea. It's been reduced yeah. to this kind of minor house because of it. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, the Targaryens or King's Landing never really had a standing army because they had the dragons and they had the ships and they had all of these cadet houses. But that was kind of just obliterated um, in the War of the, in the Dance of the Dragons and they never really recovered. So this is definitely the beginning of their of their downfall. And I think it's kind of uh, summed up in Vagar's like, fall into the river. Like he was at the beginning of the conquest and he's there yeah. at the end. He's there. He falls into the river. His wounds open up the, the, and the, the water begins to boil with red blood, which is an amazing image. The surname Valerian that these guys keep getting, J.S. has it, Luke has it and everything. Is it the, is it the bastard name uh, for Targaryen? No, 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 no. She married no, no, another no, house. No, father was a Valerian. She married a Valerian. Okay, yeah. so Valerian house, is not house, the... House Valerian is another house that came with the Targaryens from Valeria. Okay. Driftmark. Because... Arane Waters is the bastard of Driftmark. Yeah, okay, yeah because uh, Adam the Hull was also given... Yeah. Uh, there was Stannis in, in the books. Yeah, yeah, they're well, in. That's the island they were going to sack for all the money. And no, no, Davos that was. Is... Cl- oh, don't... That was Chlor Island, oh. wasn't it? No. Oh, it might have been Celtigar. You're right. You're right. You're no. right. 
Valerian's um, like yeah, the, he's the he's nice. the admiral when they when they try and take uh, King's Landing. Yeah, yeah. well, it's also our rain waters is the bastard of drift. Yeah, rock. he he becomes the heir, and yeah. Yeah, because the the Valerian, the the eighty year old guy, they refer to him as the sea snake. So is he what a Dornish bastard or something? And Jason no. is also called Valerian when he's a, clearly a bastard. Okay. Too. So it, and they compare him with Strong's, which is a Strong is a mm-hmm. bastard name, right? No, no, no. I can explain this. So she married a Valerian who was whose mother was a Targaryen. Rhaenyra married her first husband was a Valerian I, whose parents I, I, were I don't think she married him. I think it was out of wedlock. No, she was married, no, but no, he no. was he was gay and or interested in animals. Is the implication? <laughs> um, <laughs> and the I, yeah. Her kids are Sir Harwin Strong's children. So if her kids, so that's why they're called the Strong Bastards because. They're theoretically Sir Harwin Strong's kids. No, I thought they were uh, Le- Lenia. No, not Lenor. Uh, Lenor, right? Yeah, the the guy who used to yeah. uh, command sea, sm- sea smoke, the right. dragon. And he was, a, he was, he was a Lenor uh, Valerian, and his kids were Jace, Luke, and Joffrey. Right, which is they why they're Valerian. To be his but they kids. called them bastards because she maybe had an affair with Sir Harwin Strong because uh, the husband may have been gay. That's why they say yeah. there's a line where they say like. I mean, just think about whatever his name oh, was. Oh, okay. I thought yeah, Damon, Damon was always a whorehouse or something like that. Uh, okay, okay. Hmm. And Damon so the strongs, the strongs are the house that run Harren Hall at this point, but they die out, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think they die. I think there are some strongs with the Golden Company, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought they were but, dead. But they're, I think they're in exile. Oh, okay. Hmm. I think. I could be wrong. Because the the legend is that all houses that hold Harren Hall have died out, <laughs> which makes which is weird how um, they name the Lannisters la- name Sir Robert Strong that given that they're possibly an extinct house like wouldn't that raise a few eyebrows? Oh <laughs> yeah, I thought Strong was a bastard <laughs> name or something also. That's why everybody's a, it's just so many Strongs around. Yeah, yeah, there are there <laughs> yeah. are Strongs in the Golden Company, so I I think they're just exiled. I don't think they're okay. extinct. Yeah. I just wanted to say on the subject of um, the rise and fall of houses relative to our time in the world, um, I also love how like the Tullys aren't really forced and how the Lannisters are, you know, basically quite incompetent. But does anyone else think there's something in the fact that you know the Lannister who's remaining goes off in search of the money that was sent out to, you know, that basically that maybe the start of the Lannister fortunes, although they already control the mining, but the kind of yeah, the financial yeah. <laughs> strength starts from sort of some kind of misappropriated war funds <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> a quarter of the wealth of the realm realm has been sent to castle rock for safekeeping so you know. i think they were already rich because he, he was the yes. master of coin after yeah. after they killed that other guy but like but a quarter of the wealth of, of the realm <laughs> yeah maybe they started investing it while they had it yeah <laughs> yeah so i think that's significant yeah, Did we want to do everyone's favorite and least favorite character? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. So let's start with you, Thomas, this time. <laughs> oh, so uh, I guess my favorite character is Maester Norin from uh, Maidenpool. Oh, he's the, yeah. He's yeah. kind of got... Uh, he's, oh, yeah. He's, yeah. He's the maester that kind of gives Damon and Nettles the head start and kind of he's willing to take the, take the fall for... Uh, Lord Mooton and stuff. I, I just thought he was an interesting character. And I guess least favorite, probably One Eye, I guess, Aemond. Mm, interesting. Uh, how about you, Bina? Um, God, there's so few who are admirable, so I'm going to go with <laughs> Thomas's, Thomas's pick for the favorite, and I think least favorite. I mean, you could go for someone obvious like Blood and Cheese, but it's my personal least favorite is... Um, is it hard Hugh the Hammer who thinks, <laughs> oh, I'm I'm the bastard son of an ironmonger, but yeah, or blacksmith. I've just like raped and pilloried, you know, this poor town. Now I want to be king because I have a dragon. What a dickhead. So yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. <laughs> uh, Duncan? Um, oh God, I'm trying to think. 
I guess Prince um, Damon is kind of has some interesting call. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I like him, but he, he's one of the few characters that is fleshed out a little bit. I do love the image of him just sitting alone in the ruins of Harrenhal, just waiting yeah. and striking marks off a tree with his uh, with his sword. And there's it's definitely something epic when he sends off nettles and uh, his dragon screeches and shatters all the windows. So that was like some of the description of that imagery was like really the most effective part of the book. Um, and he seems like an interesting character. I would like to learn more about him and his relationship yeah. with Nettles. Uh, worst character? Oh, God. Um, I don't know. Probably. Uh, I can't think of any. Um, mm, Joffrey. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, yeah, I can't think of any. <laughs> himself get, gets himself king, but it also gets his mother's dragon killed. Also, yeah, yeah. So good. Oh, but he was he was little. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was just a stupid kid. Yeah, and he finished off more dragons. Power to him. <laughs> uh, Mikhail. Um, my, you know what? I'm gonna say maybe my favorite character was Rhaenyra. I just kind of like the position that she's she's in i think it's really fascinating and i think that her descent into madness and cruelty is precipitated by a lot of factors um that make her like sort of cersei like but but not as bad i don't know yeah. um and my least favorite is queen allison because she started this yeah. whole damn thing yeah yeah mm. true uh lee my favorite is alan valerian alan of hull uh, you stole mine. <laughs> sorry, the ba- yeah, the bastard who's like, "Fuck you, bastards can be good and honorable." He was chill. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even if John he murdered Snow. like everybody. Wait, yeah, was that Alan or Adam? Uh, Adam? I have no idea. Adam. <laughs> Adam. I know that the other one, the one who doesn't die, ends up helping Damon conquer Dorne, um, or Darren. Um, but my least favorite was either. <sighs> Either Kristen Cole, because, like, get over the fact that you got rejected, buddy. Like, it doesn't justify you to murder everybody. Um, or or Alicent herself, because if she wasn't so insistent on her kids becoming king, they would never have done it. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah, for least favorite, I'm going to say Alicent, because she starts this whole war and then she just kind of drops off the map and becomes a prisoner. She doesn't become a player at all. I thought she, I thought it would be more of a battle of wills between her and Rhaenyra, uh, but ultimately she just gets captured and does nothing for like three quarters of the book. So, yeah, not yeah, a Yeah, but that's character. not her fault. That's George R. R. Martin for letting her drop off the map, I guess, or making that choice. Yeah, but she. See, I, yeah, right. Yeah, she didn't. <laughs> I don't know. I just, with, I just. Uh... I just feel with Alicent that, okay, there's always the self-interest of I want my children to one day be king. But I think there's also pragmatism to her and to those conspirators insofar as she knows that, that the majority of people in Westeros aren't going to accept a woman ruler. Moreover, woman ruler whose successes aren't universally acknowledged as, you know, being of the true line. So, I don't well, I know. Guess my prob- I think you can argue prob- that she did... She- but to convince Aegon to be king, right? I mean, Aegon initially didn't want to be king. He wanted he uh, let let my sister be. But Christian Cole convinced him that if he doesn't, then then um, you know a princess, a queen, uh, Rhaenyra would have his his kids and everybody killed. So you know, I mean, she didn't do it out of ambition. That's she kind of no, that's just that's rationalizing not, yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, and Rhaenyra right. actually, Rhaenyra says she has no intention before things start getting bloody that she has no intention of doing that. Yeah, I think my problem with Alicent You can say that. that. The problem is once you're in power and people are doubting your right to rule, I don't think it was a stupid assumption for Kristen Cole to make. I think but, it's all pragmatic. Why, That's how things work. Why do we think that she wouldn't be accepted, though? I mean, some one of the images that stood out to me in the book was when, when they finally announced that um, the series had died. And all the all the small, fo- you know, they were going out announcing like "Long live King Aegon," and people were like, "What the fuck? Like, <laughs> isn't Rainy Rainera the queen?" And like, you know, because fundamentally, the people don't matter. People don't matter on their own. What matters is the barons. So, I mean, I'm just but thinking of the parallel to the anarchy in the UK, well, so like not the UK actually, in England and Normandy. But the small folk do eventually people. turn against her, and that's kind of what brings her down. Eventually, yeah. Yeah, yeah but also, no, but, but it does it though, because she isn't brought down, is she? At the end of this book, she's she on the run, the but she isn't castle. brought down. Yeah, but yeah. we know that she's going to come back, and that ultimately this story has another chapter, and it's very yeah. similar to Queen Matilda, who was. Yeah, Rhaenyra died. 
No, no, we never die. Sunfire, oh. Sunfire ate, ate, ate her. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean that side loses. We know that Aegon the third, yeah. Wars. But what I mean is that is, the fact that the city, like she would have been in a far stronger position if she had held King's Landing, but because she had become, she'd made all these decisions and become so hate and become so paranoid and become so hated by the small folk, they pushed her out of the castle and pushed her into a far weaker position. So I think ultimately the small folk do matter as a, as a, as a force in the world in this I'm not saying they don't matter, but I'm just saying that they're not enough on their own. Like if you, if you had the small folk in general saying that she was the fair queen and, you know, the queen of our youth and all in support of her, but every single, but the barons in general weren't convinced by her legitimacy, it wouldn't be enough. They're a necessary, but not sufficient condition. Why wouldn't they accept her? Yeah, I don't yeah, think that's because I've already sworn to it. A given. Like I think yeah, if she had agreed. if her rule had started, if if things had gone in the normal way that they that they were supposed to, I don't think that like she doesn't seem she's not she's not like our our Viserys. Like she doesn't seem crazy. She makes some really bad decisions and she has a lot of, of life experiences that knock her off her rocker. But I don't think that there's any anything that's says per, per se that she would have been a bad queen bad enough to really create dissent i mean we don't know it could have gone gone to hell but i don't get the sense i think it's all i think it's all about queen. legitimacy of the line of succession because ultimately when you start off as a queen regnant rather than a queen consort it's it's weird like your value as a queen rather than a king in that position is ultimately on whether you can breed a future king like people will put up with one queen but they'll want to see that there's another king coming but like they're has, basically okay, so you're a holding has, position yeah but they're cast their, there's aspersions on them aren't there i mean like that people she's, are worried well, about whether she's they're got, she's got a targaryen husband and targaryen yeah. children too right Even i mean I, first two don't yeah, count how, the second batch are all pure yeah. targaryen <laughs> and and <laughs> We already know most of the barons accepted her. So the Starks side with her. The Aarons side with her. The Baratheons were assumed to side Water. with them. Dorne's not in the kingdom. And the River Lords side with her. Like, who is it who's so opposed to a woman being in charge? That they'll fight her, except yeah. for it's maybe the... High the Towers. It's... Yeah, and the High Towers are only against her because it's they're... completely in their own interest. Yeah. I really don't think there would have been an issue with her being a woman. I don't either. It's all rationalization on Chris and Queen Alicent's part because Alicent wants a high tower, Otto High Tower wants one of his grandkids, and Kristen Cole is, you know, unable to get over rejection. Yeah, I well, think I'm just they not need to sure. I mean if you judge the attitudes towards a ruling woman in our time of Song of Ice and Fire, I can't imagine this period is more progressive. Surely it would no, be No, but but they but had a really they long time after to having Renera for a queen. Mm, that's a good point. I mean, she, she pretty much went crazy during the six months. I think they might have regressed, you know, after having Renera for a queen and seeing how paranoid she was. Yeah. yeah they call her Magor with teats, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and That's not she's, she's the matter. cause of the repressiveness. Okay. But, but here's yeah, the thing, that when the Greens were in charge, they rounded up all the Blacks and put them in the cells. But except for Beesbury, they did not kill any others. But but when uh, when she took over Queen Rhaenyra, she started executing all the all the Greens, right, and and put them up on display. So she should have been a bit more diplomatic about it, you know. Yeah, and, but I mean, like, what how been going on? Her yeah. Kids are... yeah, that's true. She lost like three kids in a span of a, f- a few months. So. This is what's going to th- happen to Cersei, guys. It's what's going to happen. What do you guys think is up with the whole, the kind of deformed baby that Rhaenyra has the, with the yeah. stubby tail and the hole in yeah, the Yeah, same as yeah, what Danny had, Dan's... right? Same yeah, as Tyrion, yeah. too. There's actual dragon blood it's in just them. shitty Targaryen genetics. Do you think right, that it... means anything for Tyrion and his story of his kind of deformed? A third dragon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that oh, he that he actually is a Targaryen. Yeah, because Oberyn, because oh. uh-huh. says that he was born with a tail. At yeah. least that was the story. Wait, hang on. Aren't don't all children in Utero have tails? Isn't that a thing? I hope. Yeah, not. they do. They okay. Do, they do. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> I was about to sound really stupid. <laughs> Tails and webbed fingers. That's why we have a tailbone. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Good. Yeah. We also have webbed fingers. <laughs> right. So yeah. I, I kind of I kind of think that part of that was exaggeration and dramatic whatever, but it's possible that there is some genetic issue that happens. I mean, maybe maybe the stallion that mounts the world was never going to be born anyway. Yeah. 
It also so confirms actually, that Mary Mazdua didn't actually deform the baby, that it was like that yeah. from the beginning. Yeah, I think it's just blood of the dragon kind of thing. Does. Yeah, it seems to suggest that they've actually got physical dragon blood in them, and that's how that's how the dragons can sort of bond with them, the same way that the, the Starks incest. are able to bond with wolves. Yeah, and they, this, uh, it didn't sorry. have wings. Visenya, baby Visenya didn't have wings, right? And weren't they? Did they say that Danny's baby had wings? Uh, or, or not Danny's baby, but Resinia was a, tr- a twisted little thing, uh, and only the scaly part was the stubby tail she had. So, and the missing missing heart, of course. Do you think oh, yeah, John's was... smoking blood when he gets stabbed? Do you think that has anything? Is that just the cold, or do you think that that's, that's blood of the dragon? The cold. cold. That's the cold. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. No, I will say you've now officially convinced me Tyrion is a Targaryen. I never wanted to be that. <laughs> I don't, I I don't want him to be. I don't, I don't want him to, to be a Targaryen. I don't, yeah, I don't want him to be either, but I think the he def- is. Deformation runs in the Targaryen blood. Maley's the monstrous, Danny's baby, this baby. And Tyrion, I, I don't know, with the deformity and everything else, I don't know if I can keep arguing against it. So I mean, basically, if you're giving birth to a Targaryen child, you have one of three options. One, they'll be psycho. Two, they'll be a dragon. And three, they might be awesome. Yeah, those are awesome ones are kind of psycho. Yes, yeah, this is true. I think it's I think it's all of the above. <laughs> right. <laughs> so well, shall we say... talk about Nettle, whether she's a bastard or she's just a random person? Wait, favorite characters, did you go? Oh yeah, sorry Nadia. How about you? I What's didn't... your favorite characters? Yeah. Probably Rhaenys or Bela. I mean Rhaenys the queen that never was. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, or Bela. Yeah, they're pretty great. And the dragons too. Um, yeah. And worst, I think either Alison or Eamon or Damon. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll give credit. I'll. I'll. So you guys haven't called on Daron, uh, the guy who read that the blue dragon. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Tesserion. Tesserion. Uh, so. Oh, Tesserion. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna Tesserion. give pro- shout out to him. You know, I mean. Poor guy, he just had a bad hand, and uh, and given the small army he started out with, the high tower army, he did a good job with it. So and yeah, and he seemed to be good because he was disgusted by the sacking of Tumbleton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he didn't really know how to. He didn't know how to lead. Yeah. He tried to, but it didn't work. Yeah, but wasn't he, he was also like fourteen? Yeah, yeah was... like fourteen. Yeah, but so was Rob. <laughs> yeah, but Rob was the oldest son. Yeah. I mean, he was raised his whole life for well, that role. Yeah. And you get the sense even from the beginning that he's a little more sensitive than the others. That he like he cries when his grandfather dies, and yeah. the rest of them are just like, "Whoa!" <laughs> and he's he's humble. He credits the victory to his dragon yeah. rather than himself. Right. So he might have been an okay king. And 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 Jace was also pretty pretty good too. Too bad he died pretty soon. Yeah, so. I liked him as well. Yeah, I yeah. actually thought Rhaenyra's son sounded all like good, solid kids with good heads on their shoulders. Right. Yeah. Even Joffrey. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Also, not to revisit that too lengthily, but I just double checked the the family tree. So, Rhaenyra married a Valerian who was the son of the queen who never was, and the mm-hmm. sea snake. But he was probably uh, gay. He might have been a Strong's kid. So that's who their father was. So I think the sea snake is there, like it's like a seahorse. That's kind of their sigil. Yeah, maybe. They're basically they're basically dragons of the sea. Yeah, they're Valerian. They're Valerians, and they're Valerians. Hmm. So, so do we think there are sea dragons or no? That for real? No, Why I think not? we just have drag krakens. <laughs> oh, in the we sea. hear about Naga Naga. Oh, yeah. oh right. Okay. I, I feel like the one yeah. dragon that went into the ocean. I feel like he's going to be a drowned god dragon at some point. <laughs> That's going to be um... the end of the series. <laughs> like, and somebody's going to be standing looking out over the ocean. Dany. Dany's going to be standing looking out of, the o- out of the ocean. All her dragons have died. And then suddenly, like, boom, like Shamu, out of nowhere, just a huge water dragon. And she's like, oh, I've come home. I don't know. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, I want to see some white dragons. Mm. So does this others. affect anyone's opinion of Dany at all? Yeah, like, those dragon needs to be killed. I can understand yeah. why the Marinese hate them and fear them so much. They need to be killed immediately. But unless, and if civilization is going to advance at all, they need to be gotten rid of. They're basically just nuclear dinosaurs. They're awful. Yeah. See, I don't, That's, I don't know. I, they, okay, can I can I play devil's advocate or dragon's sure. advocate? Um, <laughs> I'm I'm what people for the protection of dragons. Um, it's 
the dragons are not inherently they're not evil they're just they're just creatures like they're employed for war and i agree they probably shouldn't live around people that's probably a really bad idea but the the destruction they cause is because of men having wars it's not because the dragons are like oh let me burn up the city that would be fun what about like yeah. sheep yeah, stealer and stuff kills okay but <laughs> no no sheep you know, stealer yeah. actually doesn't no sheep kill. stealer eats sheep yeah, yeah no but he, he only... kills he kills shepherds and stuff no only when the shepherds no, uh, fight months. back or something yeah yeah only when they fight back to protect yeah. their life and, and cannibal yeah. mostly yeah. attacks other dragons and grey ghost mostly hunts fish and you mostly don't see him at all so the three dragons would actually fine the the wild ones wild dragons yeah, yeah. I, I disagree. One Dragon, thing, dragons yeah. are just inherently unstable. Yeah, they're a bunch uh, <laughs> They're dangerous. Wait, they dragons are dragons are actually kind of similar to elephants, you know, using elephants in battle because once they're yeah, exactly. in there, they're just trampling everything in sight. They don't care who's on exactly. whose side. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, one, they one possibility be... is that one possibility is that because they're bonded with their Targaryen masters, the actual the sense of sort of anger and hatred between the two rival families is actually what's feeding this kind of carnage. Like during peacetime, they might actually be quite docile and and non murderous. Cannibal's pretty nasty, and he doesn't have any bonded owner. Yeah, but okay, but, he, but he, I he mean, you have people. wild animals in any ecosystem that are dangerous. You know, I'm not like I don't I don't think that you need to kill all the lions because you know all the lions are evil. You know, it's no. it's. Yeah, but lions can't. Well, I mean, like, there are managing tigers, but you can't <laughs> go around, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I, just, I, I feel don't know. Like... Applying morality to them seems seems dubious to me. I don't know. That's fair. You, you, they're not immoral, but it's but it's also like there's a difference between a lion and a dragon. Like, they're it's more like it's like leaving a huge bomb right next to a city. Like, <laughs> sure, bomb itself is not evil. The bomb itself is not immoral. But if you leave something explosive right next to people, like, it's a yeah, I don't know. The Targaryens a... brought them there, right? The Targaryens brought them there. I mean, if you see Dragonstone, all the three wild dragons, they say in they stay in the Dragon Mount, which is, I think, a volcano. So, I mean, by themselves, they're usually solitary creatures. They prefer to stay alone in unpopulated areas. But you know, the Targaryens were the ones who brought them to King's Landing or to Dragonstone. So. Yeah. Has yeah. has anyone seen War Horse? It's a dragon sport, not yeah. dragons. Yeah, yeah, I've seen War Horse. Okay, so have you seen I just... Zor's horse or Zor's War Horse? War Horse. War Horse. Well, I mean, oh, the the reason I make that comparison is because like you have horses in that in that I saw the play, I didn't see the movie, but but they're they're fighting each other because there's Germans versus um, British people. And it's just really sad because obviously the horses are like going at each other and you get scenes like this occasionally in, in ASO IAF as well. But like that's that like seemed to me really sad when the dragons were fighting each other because it's not like yeah. they're just being they're being rammed into each other because of the men, not because of each other. And like, I don't know, maybe they'd like to just like mate and have um, fun and whatever. But I like, I think I think when Vermitor, they're right. predators, a, though. They're not. I, there's I think, a great co- quote where it says, uh, "The singers would often tell how she thrice lifted Vermithor's wing with her nose, as oh. if to make him fly again." But this is most like yeah, a fable. I know. But, that but, was sad. Yeah, but <laughs> Vermithor did not didn't have his uh, you know didn't have his rider right. I mean, Hugh the Hell was killed uh, by somebody else. Uh, so Vermithor <laughs> just went into the battle and fought uh, Sea Smoke and. Uh, uh, Tesserion by itself without the command. It just wanted to play, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, know, like wait, was... who, which which were the two dragons that you know the Mister said there was no actual dancing except at this one point. Yeah, Tesserion yeah, and then uh, Sea Smoke. That yeah. was the yeah. Aeron's dragon and then Adam the Hell's dragon. To be fair, so... Michal, I'll agree with you in the sense that like if I had the choice between getting rid of all the dragon riders so that no one could tame them. Or just getting rid of dragons, I'd get rid of dragon riders because it's the riders who aim them against people. But mm. that's much less likely. And like the the I, dragons themselves are pretty goddamn dangerous. 
the yeah. the thing is, uh, I so I I was gonna say, you know, bit before there were dragons or when dragons were not in the picture, uh, mostly the armies fought around castles and stuff like that. They mostly left the villages and stuff like that, except for foraging and stuff like that. When they needed food and stuff like that, that's when they go went and pillaged. So mostly the war was fought between the lords and the castles and stuff. But I think the addition of dragons, they just went around and just smoked every town they came across. So. Yeah. So first time in the war, civilians were also part of the thing. I I don't it's, know. Am I wrong? No, civilians are no, part no. of it every time. So the dragons only accelerated things. And yeah. They didn't change mm. much. I don't know. I, I feel, I'm very fond of dragons, and I you know can't imagine you know not having dragons around. So. It's like having a weapon. Yeah, don't too blame the poor dragons for the dragons. Vikram, okay, let me help you. It's like real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like the issue with the dragons is that it's not that they're like, they don't actually, they don't do anything really that like a human army can't do. But what they do is that they remove the cost. Like if you're, if you're a general, like devoting the men to burning everything, devoting the men to killing everyone, devoting the men to destroying a castle, like it it costs lives, it costs time and it costs men. So like it's it's not something you can choose lightly. You have to decide what you're doing. But a dragon, you can just send Aemond and his one dragon, and he can single handedly, at virtually no risk, massacre anyone he wants anywhere he wants over a huge area. He's the yeah, and he's... and there's no cost to you. There's no like oh no like maybe you lose the guy and his dragon maybe, but other than that you're set. Where he's with an army, it's like. I'm going to be without these men this whole time. They can't get to us for ages, even if we need them. And they might die. They might get ambushed. They might get trapped. They might lose. They might have to leave people living. It just, it, it reduces the, the dangers of war for the, for the, the aggressor. And really sort of, for it's, that it's reason, like, it's incredible. It's like when the war. dragons were around, they couldn't have been a civil war, you know. I mean, the, if the target is, I mean, I mean, what I mean to say, if only one house had dragons, they reign supreme, so there's no resistance, so it's peace. Uh, but but if both the sides have dragons, then uh, you know what I'm trying to say, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. because they yeah. had. Uh, be like a... See, but at this point, they had 150 point, years of it's peace. It's already right? 120 but years. But at of this peace, point, sorry. it's already two families that have dragons, right? <laughs> Since Rainy is married into the Valerians, they had dragons too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it could have eventually come to that, you know, even if the Targaryens hadn't fought between themselves, it could eventually have come to Valerian versus Targaryen. Yeah, before the Aegon, before Aegon showed up, the Seven Kingdoms fought with each other regularly, right? I mean, but after Aegon showed up, he unified the kingdoms, and for 120 years there were no wars until this one, which but think about, <laughs> which uh, made up for it all. <laughs> I think there are wars yeah. still. They're just small scale, like the Reach and of... Dorne or. What yeah. we see in uh, the the sworn sword and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it is a bit like the too. Cold War, where it's like the Russians and the Americans, where it's like mutually assured destruction. Like yeah. you, you dare not engage each other, or you'll just destroy everything, which is ultimately yeah. what they do, and they destroy half the realm. Like they've been building up this realm for 150 years. They've achieved so much in unifying it, and then they just set it all to fire in in like two years. Yeah. It's, it's amazingly frustrating. The other thing with Lee's point was that. Um, I totally agree, and there's a nice comparison with World War One, where you've got this new weapon, like the machine gun, that is yeah. so overpowered that it just causes mass killing. It's like a war of attrition. Hundreds and thousands of troops can storm over the trenches, and one guy with a machine gun can just mow them all down. So it's 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 giving soldiers a tool that is way too overpowered, yeah. and it, all it does is cause a war of attrition. Yeah. I also so if we're gonna like... have wars. Oh, it's hey. much better to have armies. Because it takes discipline to actually achieve them rather than just having one guy on a dragon yeah. going to town on everyone. It's also solid proof of why I honestly really strongly believe that having the kingdoms united is dangerous. Because the thing is that, like, in a non united kingdom, if you're some, like, you're some Western man, right? You have a fight with your neighbor. You can't go too far because if you go too far, the Lannisters are going to be like, look, you have to stop. You're both my bannermen. But. Mm. The Lannisters also can't go too far because if they do, you can side with one of their neighbors. It's this balance of power. You you can't piss off your fellow hedge knight because your boss will get mad at you. But you can't piss off your boss too much or the boss can't piss you off too much because you can go to one of the other kings. But in a united kingdom, it like 
the the, the it, it bottles up the very very minor warfare because you can't rebel you have no leverage over your your liege lord because he has the king behind him but when it does blow up it's a real civil war not just like a petty border fight you can mm. like the lannisters obliterating the reins from existence is something that would never have happened in the pre targaryen days because up until the targaryens came you could never piss someone off so much that they could do that to you because if you went that far someone else would get you back but on, yeah, the, on and, the other and, side they're also constantly scrapping much more than they are under a united banner true but I, I almost think it's safer it's more like it's like it's like in the sworn sword it's maybe one or two farms get burned which is bad but at most it's a few sworn swords it's a few mercenaries one or two knights sort of and a couple militiamen kind of kind of fighting in a field which you, you yeah. just you see, even with that happening all over the place you can't approach the the economy of scale for casualties yeah, people are held accountable to where they live. Like, they're actually dealing with their neighbors. So even if they yeah. have a fight, they're ultimately going to have to live with these people so it's a lot more civil. And if they do have a dispute, they can actually go to a to their great house, which isn't actually much of a trek. Um, whereas yeah. if you have a, a unified kingdom or a unified realm, two houses going at it is actually going to bloody everyone. So when you have the Lannisters and the Stark fighting, it bloodies the Westerlands, it bloodies the Neck, it bloodies the Riverlands. I mean, God, the Riverlands are the worst place to live in the world because they are basically yeah. the thoroughfare for all the great houses fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, I thought of another thing, uh, why I like Rhaenys even more suddenly. Um, yeah. So it's happened two times before, right, that she was passed over for being queen. Um, there was a council both times and they decided that, no, a woman is not going to be queen and we're going to choose this guy. Um, and the reason it didn't go to civil war because it was because she chose to step down, right? Yeah. Instead mm-hmm. of going to war. Well, there was a great so, council, so she won the majority twenty to one or something. So oh, even no, if she, she won, no. uh, yeah, she, she lost. lost sorry, so, yeah. but she lost twenty to one. So even if she wanted to go to war, still, she would have she like a, a minor. Too, right. She had a dragon yeah. too, right? And she could have, you know, I don't know, got some other Targaryens on her side, presumably. Yeah. But I don't think that's the sign of a good king to go to war. Like, I think no, a war of quills and ravens is a far more civilized way of dealing with democracy rather than just getting on your dragon yeah, and setting everything That's what I'm flight. saying. I mean, she chose to, you know, she chose to agree with the council. Like the fact that, yeah, no, no, I see what you're saying. But the fact that both sides um, resort to this proves that they would be terrible kings because they don't yeah, think about the wrong. They don't think about the good of everyone. They think about only their own political ambitions and only their own uh, egos and pride. Well, that's we something interesting that? also because, like, what the civil war uh, does is you know, pretty much, you know, um, drives Aegon the Third crazy as well. Um, since he mm. gets, you know, he sees his mother get eaten by a dragon, and he pretty much ends the dragons after that. And he's not, yeah. he's not very really normal after that either. Not even in, yeah, not he, even in one bite in six bites. That's <laughs> so yeah, much that's worse. Horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he um, locks the last dragons down in a pit, basically, where they become... They can't really grow and they can't really... They sort of become deformed and get smaller and smaller until they're like this. Bird. <laughs> Fuck dragons. Yeah. Although, he, apparently, he was quite a good ruler. Like, he did reconstruct the realm, basically, and live through peace. But after seeing his mother get killed, he was a very sort of depressed individual. But he, he did leave the realm in a good state. And he actually... Cool. I think his son was Darren, who went on to... Uh, invade Dawn and try and bring it into the realm. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, Baylor the yeah. Blessed was also, also his kid. Dragon <laughs> yeah, Baylor was his brother. It's interesting to see the names that come back afterward. Like, I'm always interested what like what people name their children after like a conflict like this. So a lot of the names do come back, but like you don't know really any Alicents or any Amons, you know, or right? Am I uh, making that up? Yeah, yeah. Be no Amon. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. Amon. <laughs> It couldn't be further from his namesake. Yeah. <laughs> Can we discuss how both, like, not only awful as a people, but also how vilely wasteful the Targaryens are? They have, they are, in addition to being the kings and having all the loyalty from each individual house that should give them, they have a private, gigantic navy, a private, gigantic air force that no one else can match, and pretty impressive armies from their, like, special crown land and and dragonstone land houses and then they're like you know what let's devastate our own houses worse than anyone else murder our entire family 
eliminate our Navy and our Air Force. It, it's shocking Robert's Rebellion didn't happen sooner. Well, I was under the impression that they didn't really have an army. They basically relied entirely on the naval and aerial strength. And they obviously brought in hosts from like um, allies and, and ha great houses that but owed fealty to them. But they didn't actually have a standing army. And that's kind of what's weakens not them. A big point, yeah, but, but I think the Valerians at that point counted as pretty much, you know, Targaryens. Mm -hmm. So you could count mm -hmm. the fleet as being part of their force. Yeah, no, I, I am it's counting the fleet. so but, uh, wasteful. It's see, upsetting. Why is it wasteful? They're the kings. I mean, if they want to stay the kings, then they have to have that stuff, don't they? Like, I, I, oh, well, I don't... It's wasteful what they did to it, which is... Yeah, it's wasteful oh, that yes. they just right. destroy it all. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah, why they... Alice in Hightower sucks. Yeah, like, imagine you're... Like, let's somehow pretend the Blackfire War didn't happen. And even just ignore the dragons. Let's say they're and have Robert Baratheon try to rebel. If you've still got like the large family, the the huge private fleet, the connections to the free cities, like all you'd need is one or two great houses. Robert couldn't win. Yeah, I I also think. Well, okay. Here, here's a question for you guys. Then, what should Rhaenyra have done? I mean, like, is she wrong to because she doesn't start basically any of the uh, like proper aggression of, of the war um so I, I i mean i'm torn like yeah part of me is like oh she should have just turned the other cheek and you know meekly accepted to be you know princess of dragonstone against her father's wishes and then part of me is like no screw that like she's the queen and you know she she didn't intend to make this a, a bloodbath you know i don't know what do you think it's exactly the Stannis and Renly thing, right? I mean, Stannis couldn't have just sought by it was his duty. I think they look at it as a duty to be kings and stuff like that. So, and well, I mean, I think Rhaenyra wants to be queen, but I don't. Yeah, really and plus Aegon was a sucky king anyway, right? I mean, he was impatient and ill-tempered and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of think I really think she had no choice, but maybe yeah. she could have. She could have demanded a council and then said, "Why don't?" Basically, said like, "Why don't we remove?" like me and yeah. you from the equation or something and have it be like could have been her kids versus or even just or like there 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 was I think, I think, a way I, I think it was too late for a great council because they already yeah. stole the greens already stole all the money right and they even set some aside for bribes and such so, yeah like yeah. she had no they need to, yeah. I, I, think I, just, think, I think she did what she had to do they really need to rethink it. the they really need to rethink the strategy of putting the heir to the Iron Throne on Dragonstone where they have no power, like, once the yeah. king dies. Because that's that's always the problem. If she had been in King's Landing when her father had died, this would have been resolved really quickly. But because she was on Dragonstone, completely isolated from what was going on, they had weeks and weeks and weeks to plot all, put all of these things in place, uh, set up all of these alliances, stole away all their money, coronate uh, Aegon. They, they, they absolutely... Um, draw out every morsel of advantage they could because she was on Dragonstone. I don't know why she has to be on Dragonstone, why they have to have yeah. the air on Dragonstone away for everything because it's, it's over and over again. It causes all these problems. Same thing with Stannis. Yeah, if he had been in King's Landing when this had happened, he would have been king. Like uh, It's just well, a silly went. thing. No, that no, he would have died with Ned Stark. He would have died, yeah. yeah. No, because no, I, like, no, I don't think so. The only like, way to take Dragonstone is if you have a good navy. And so Dragonstone is like this imprem, you know, it, uh, the strong fort thing it's, it's yeah, kind of after Ed and Ed Eddie's it's like the strongest fortress I yeah. think he would have been a voice of reason with Ned he would have been able yeah. to uh he would have had his own soldiers his own retainers and all that and his own household guard and he also would have been more practical than Ned and actually kept Renly there or at least tried to deal with Renly brought in soldiers to deal with the Lannisters he would have actually done what Ned should have which is imprison the queen and Joffrey as soon as um as soon as he would have given the order, done. and then Ned would have been like, "My king tells me to do it, so we're fine." Yeah, but I that mean, was but Stannis' have told... decision, though, right? He was he and saw he everything that was going on, was like, "I'm out of here." He yeah. nobody told him to go back to to Dragonstone. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's true. Yeah, gathers. And I get the sense Rhaenyra probably. I mean, I'm assuming that they grow up on Dragonstone more so than in King's Landing. So they probably she probably was like, oh, "I'm having a kid. I want to be at home." You know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, but if, if, if you're cultivating yourself as the next queen of the Seven Kingdoms, you can't be off holidaying on Dragonstone. You have to be in the center of the action from beginning to end. True. And you have to that's be cultivating point. all of the relationships with the people at court because that's what matters. Well, yeah. I, I feel like she felt that her father had done that work for her, that, that the groundwork had been laid, that everyone had kind of declared for her already. And she, I don't yeah. think she felt that this was a possibility. 
I, that's that's, that's what's interesting. It's like when when did Alison Hightower have this idea that you know did well they mentioned what, a tournament where they actually this rivalry sort of began where actually um, I think it was a banquet I think where uh, she, where the queen was wearing green no, and no, the princess was wearing black. It was a tournament because Kristen Cole wears Rhaenyra's favor uh, in the jousting, and Rhaenyra has like um, uh, wears um, Targaryen black and white, and. Uh, yeah. The, the late, uh, queen or princess, or no, she's queen. Alessand uh, wears green, so they noted at that point that there was a distinguished rivalry. So I think even also, at that point, she should have been aware of Alessand's ambitions. Mm. How old is she when she dies again? Isn't she like thirty-three or something? Yeah, thirty-five yeah. or something. Yeah, like that's that's one of that. I was flabbergasted when they said that because I assumed she was like fifty. I, you know, okay, I have to say, I don't think like, George R. R. Martin has a very good grasp of age. He like fair, he does the fair. same thing here that he did at the beginning of of a Game of Thrones, which is that everybody is like ten, you know, yeah. like the oldest yeah. heir is fourteen or sixteen well, maybe I, at the beginning. I think he's he's working under the assumption that people don't really live that long in this world, and they have to start becoming like there's no concept about adolescence. Once you turn thirteen, you're a man. Uh, so yeah, you have to take so on those responsibilities much earlier than our kind of modern mentality would assume. Helena gets well, married after her first flowering and presumably starts puffing out kids immediately. Yeah, by 22 she had like three kids, right? <laughs> well, yeah, like Queen Helena was like 21 when she died, yeah. right? And yeah, that, I mean, yeah. that was like after. Or Helena. Crazy. Yeah, I think I think everybody can agree she's she's the number one victim, at least on yeah. that we're that told of. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. And nobody, like, there aren't any songs about that, are there? Like, you never hear Maybe people. Are. I did find it interesting that he dedicated so much time to that incident and, like, maybe a couple of sentences to the dozens of villages, does hundreds of men, women, and children that <laughs> Prince Damon, not Prince Damon, uh, Prince uh, Aemond, uh, just wasted. Like, they get a couple well, of sentences. That's a maester for you. The maester is like, eh, they're not important. Yeah. Like, the small folk are held in such low regard. I actually don't think that I, I kind of came out of this liking Maester Gildane, Archmaester Gildane. I, I didn't think that he was like disdainful of the small folk as much as it was. He was taking a chronicle, right? So he kept so, like citing all of these sources that I don't know where he got all of the sources from, like the exact incident with blood and cheese, but. Like, there aren't witnesses to the stuff about the small folk. It's just like, well, all these villages went up, you know. And I thought he did say, like, you know, the women were raped repeatedly. Like, I, I didn't think he was like, oh, this doesn't matter. I just, like, not as not as much true as the as the big people. But I don't think he, he didn't care as much as there weren't sources. And it wasn't relevant to the historical telling or whatever. You could argue that it's based purely on accounts so he's not going to be able to get many accounts of these burned villages because the people who view them are being burned um, right. maybe one one little kid saw it and that's kind of what he's getting his accounts from whereas something like uh the sack of Ki- the, the riots in king's landing or the um the blood and cheese incident are able to be relayed far more accurately um one thing i did i was kind of uh i didn't quite understand was how he had such a vivid recounting of the fight yeah. between damon and uh Aymond. I like, think it's how the was he able to see that if they both died? Oh, uh, Elise. Um, yeah. Just Hales yeah. Rivers or whatever. Yeah, we don't. Do we, we don't hear anything rivers. of her afterwards. Yeah. I, wonder you think she's, I think she's the ghost of High Heart, or she no, might. Be. She's, no, no, it's, nah. it's one thirty. <laughs> it's she's not she's up a, now. I don't she know was, years. Like, okay, I don't do math. <laughs> She's implied okay, to be is... a she's implied to be a follower of the Lord of Light because she sees the vision in the flame. Yeah, this and is the Ghost of High Heart is definitely not like a follower of the Lord of Light. Years before that, yeah. I think the Ghost okay. of High Heart is a child of the forest. I think the I Ghost of High Heart was... has something to do with Summer Hall. Well, she does, but yeah, yeah. Like, but she would have been Jenny, so yeah, she would have been a hundred by the time of Summer Hall, if not hundred and fifty. I was thinking, Ailes, or uh, did you say Alice? Her name, Alice yeah. Rivers, might end up somewhere in Blood Raven's line. In the oh. in the oh. Riverlands, because he's a uh, he's a Blackwood, right? He is. Huh. So that's that was my thought. I th- I think uh, KC Centurion kind of shot that down in the forms, but uh, mm. yeah, actually was, uh, there was one the other Grace... Blackwood reference, right? The guy uh, robbed yeah. the red or something. The best archer in Westeros. Yeah. Uh, the Blackwood Lord is like uh, what is his name? Uh, but he's he's just a kid, but he. Uh, Oh right, his bannerman is the best. Uh, yeah, the, best the eleven-year-old character. kid who cried. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Aegon the Unworthy is the father of the great bastards, isn't he? 
Yeah, he has. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, kind of, it's, it's a black, a, it's a black, black wood wife or, or yeah. mother. Well, it's interesting that um, Alice Rivers is the mother of a of a black fire, really. So yeah, or a shadow baby. <laughs> well, I don't think bastards of the Targaryens are necessarily called Blackfire. I think Blackfire is actually just a house that was created specifically yeah. for the Great Bastards. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So yeah, no, Targaryen um, bastards because just he whatever. got the he got the sword right, which was when yeah before. Aegon let them choose their own names when he legitimized them. So Blackfire chose Blackfire. Oh, Targaryen okay. bastards are just named after whatever region they were born. They in. would probably be Waters because uh, like Orient Waters. Crown lands. No, it was Brynden Rivers, right? Because his mother was from the Riverlands. Yeah. Yeah. It's whatever yeah. region the mother is, you know. There. It's yeah. Bitter Steel and Blood Raven are both rivers. Mm. Um, also, this is so I was thinking about how, like, really, I don't know if you can blame Rhaenyra or you can blame Alicent some, but like, really, the issue is that the Targaryens should have had real laws of succession. Like, there's this, it was making me think of Russian history, actually, which is that. Uh, Peter the Great, after his reign, decided to say, after he murdered his own son, um, he made a law, which was the the king basically gets to pick, the emperor gets to pick anyone from his own family, and they get to be the emperor. And then that person gets to pick anyone from their own family, and they're the emperor, getting rid of the whole primogeniture thing. And for all the flaws... Any emperor can make an emperor. (laughs) Right? They (laughs) did sort of had a a basic principle, which was that um, either the the oldest male or the oldest female would be the next in line because they didn't believe in, like, the right of male heirs above female heirs. Yeah, and the Romans actually adopted, right? I mean, uh, like, Octavian was not... uh... Well, the way it was described was that Targaryen kings and queens would actually rule basically as a couple. You know, uh, Alysanne and um, Jaehaerys ruled as a couple, and they did amazing work. And I think it has something to do with the idea of the dragon neither being male or female, so they don't raise one gender above the other. That's more of an Andal kind of tradition, which is. Because I was of the opinion that she was that Alison was just kind of a special case that their their relationship was kind of atypical. Not. Mm. I think they pretty much married. Eldest brother to eldest sister, so that they could have that Targaryen king and queen. Uh, and Renira had more uh, a Valerian blood than her brother Aegon, right? So that also complicates things a bit. I think how did she that. have more? Yeah, how did she uh, have more Her father was. Father was an Aaron. No, no. no. They had an the Aaron. same father. No, no. Yeah, yeah. But, so her her father Vasiris um, married one of his sisters. No, uh, he married Aaron. No, no, no. Her mother was an Aaron. How did she have more Targaryen blood? I mean, the father was the she same, doesn't. and one was high tower. One's mother was a high tower, and one's mother was an Aaron. So it's just, the, she has the same amount of Targaryen. Yeah, she was an Aaron. She's an unnamed. Hang on. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so because but she's no. You know, I'm sure she's Aaron. an Aaron. Yeah, she is. Yeah. yeah. Because she also says uh, her mother was descendant of the Storm Lords, all, so that's why she counted on the Storm Lords' support immediately. And the Aaron thing only was because the the lady who was luring Aaron, uh, so she would sympathize with the cause or something. Yeah, maybe because uh, the Baratheon. Maybe because at this point the Baratheon line is not as distinct because it's only been a hundred years or something. So maybe they still count as partly Targaryen. And someone that's recently married into them. Maybe it was like Vala- like House Valerian blood, not not Valerian. Oh, but she doesn't have Valerian blood. She doesn't. She her ancestors weren't from Valerian. Right. And anyway, Aegon and Rhaenyra have exactly the same descendants on the father's. Uh, sorry, um, what's the opposite of descendants? Yeah. Anyway, father's side, yeah. Ancestors. Ancestors. Yeah, on on the father's side, right? And the neither yeah. of their mothers are Targaryen, so. Her her grandfather did no. Her grandfather was married she to a Baratheon, the so they're still pretty closely related. Yeah, so maybe the Baratheons are being counted as Targaryen. I don't know. I was just trying to make more the point that like the advantage of a really strict system of of succession is that it it does remove like having all these great councils weakened their own legitimacy. Yeah, but doesn't having that these... set you up for like a a, a addle minded? king or something like that you know what i'm saying yeah but like even an adult minded king is kind of safer than constant civil wars and arguments over who should be king if any of you are familiar with Mughal history i'm sure vikram is yeah. basically what happened was um there was no uh, it was always going to be a guy that was going to succeed but it didn't necessarily have to be the oldest son so basically when one king died all his sons would just fight for the throne 
and one brother would kill the rest of his brothers and then become king well that only happened with uh, aurangzeb no 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 it happened pretty much every time that's so dothraki yeah. that sounds like something no, like no i don't think so it was only aurangzeb who went medieval and well it was medieval time he, he killed no, no, no. his brothers shah jahan this is this thing shah jahan the guy who built the taj yeah, mahal yeah shah jahan was peaceful it's dramatic no no listen he blinded his father and killed his and basically imprisoned him for the rest of his life so he could become king and he also did killed that? his brother that was aurangzeb who did to, did it to shah jahan no no that was shah jahan no wait how well i may have to back i guess but i feel like <laughs> you guys when bainan was talking about cricket <laughs> wait, no, wait, i'm sorry who are these people oh the, these are um, the dynasty that ruled in india huh no i it's think actually... everyone knows taj mahal right yeah who uh, so shah jahan was the guy who did that <laughs> Well, Taj Mahal is this big monument. Taj Mahal is like the most Keep romantic the monument. Somebody write a fantasy oh. novel about this, and then I'll understand. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Have any of you <laughs> read? Um, have any of you read any Daniel Abraham? Uh, no, no. no. He's, a, he's a good friend of George R. R. Martin's, apparently. But uh, the no, the nobility in that world have this system where when the they're the three oldest sons are the only ones who can inherit. The rest are sent to some rando school and lose all their rights. But the three oldest. basically just fight it out and like once the father dies or a little bit before the father dies they all just murder each other and whoever does the murdering first gets to be lord this is very um uh starlight by neil gaiman like when all the heirs are just killing each other yeah yeah it's so it happened a lot in india so oh. if you guys ever <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know why we are talking about this because if everything was settled and there was a proper line, uh, this would have been a boring See, okay. story. I mean, I mean, a, I mean, I watched just Civil to return, War. <laughs> just to return to Westeros for a second, um, I think that they actually did have this in place. Like it was well established that um, for the first hundred and hundred or so years uh, that they would. it worked pretty well the, the next in line would ascend and it just happened to be usually a male but uh, if it was a female the female and, and male queen was the eldest female and that she worked really well in Jaehaerys's case yeah well this yeah, is the, also well, the, the sister that's right yeah yeah but it just kind of all fell in a heap in this situation because i think you start to see uh, the original andals kind of pressing their advantage and trying to kind of dilute that original targaryen principle of a unified realm and start to twist it into kind of giving their own specific house political advantage yeah because the so valerians kind of the downfall of everyone because i think the valerians were actually a republic or something like that right they were not they were not a monarchy no. themselves or something yeah yeah, yeah. it was sort like of like empire. Empire. sort of like the yeah, roman republic were- I think there were like thirty yeah. ruling families or whatever. Yeah, like Volantis yeah. had, and like you know, they, I just see feel like Essos Ass- was more you know democratic, more republic, and well, everything. Yeah. So But I mean, it's really were... interesting because, like, uh, like, and if you're just choosing somebody, like, and and you have that option, I mean, that's how that's how um, Dunk's egg became king, right? Like, didn't didn't Arian actually have like a son? in the free cities who might have actually been legitimate but they had a council and they were just like never mind that yeah. guy was crazy and he's a baby no, anyway no, he so he was a dimwitted son i think he was yeah. you know, simple minded or something he, he oh, okay but mentioned. either way they were just like never mind we're not having him be king yeah so they have that flexibility but at the same time you know you have the culture clash element of like oh well it's our tradition that only men can be king so you know It's it's all it's all a mess. Uh, I think they just Good used thing. that as an excuse. I, I think they just didn't want Cole and Hightower just were using that as an excuse. The Andal tradition. I think Cole they just were making... it. But it, it, he at least the guy the writer makes it seem like some people were really like, no, you know, well, women can't be, you know. Mm. Yeah, but those people can see. But it. at this, I, I don't think that's a Targaryen tradition. I think that's no. more of an Andal tradition, and it's not been that long since the conquest at this point in time. So they're probably just, you know, trying to hold on to that culture. Yeah, I mean, the uh, target is a marrying brother to sister. Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, that's like against everything. So if they can overcome that, they could have overcome anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you guys see Bina's post on the Princess and the Queen forum, um, where she, you know, drew several parallels to actual British history? Um, yeah, that's way. Where, yeah, where, you know, yeah. Stephen and. <laughs> Stephen and Matilda. Stephen yeah. and Matilda's conflict was pretty much the same as this one, where yeah, you know was Matilda was as, the chosen heir. Yeah, it was referred to in British history as the anarchy, basically, because it's just these yeah. two uh, claimants to the throne tearing the 
tearing the kingdom apart. And it gave rise to uh, all of these kind of robber barons, sort of petty kings and petty lords, who kind of basically criminals and outlaws that kind of took over various parts of the country. And it was just a terrible situation. And it went by for about two years and she was in France for a bit. Uh, she conquered France and then she sort of came back or her son came back with a standing army and they were going to clash again. But everyone was so sick at that point that they decided to uh, try and form a peace and rebuilding. And so there is a lot of parallels between the anarchy the thing, and, um, and this story. Yeah, the petty warlords part yeah. is a lot of time of troubles in Russian history. Um, but that was because a Russian czar murdered his own son, which is a theme. <laughs> um, and then the Poles invaded and then it got really bloody for like six, seven years. But it is similar in the sense that everybody just started being like, Hey, I'm the czar. No, I'm the czar. No, I'm the czar. Mm. And just a complete breakdown. Um, yeah. Actually, yeah. um, going back to Stephen and Matilda, what happened was, you know, uh, Matilda's father, who was Henry the second, first, first, right. Um, Henry the first um, had this council of his lords and the, he made them all swear to Matilda and then when he actually died his nephew decided he wanted to be king so he became king and then Matilda was exiled until she came back and took London for some time and then she went all Renera and she started you know executing people and you know she went all crazy um, so pretty much the people gave up on her um, yeah, and she, she was sort of went into exile again, and then eventually Stephen didn't have any male heirs, so he had to accept Henry the Second as his heir. Um, so yeah. <laughs> How about we make um, a rule? So it was, Nobody's it was allowed to just decide that they want to be king. It's not allowed. <clears throat> no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, well, it, it doesn't really work. I mean, Hugh tries to do I it. I think it. I'm, you have to have support eventually. Otherwise, it's meaningless just to say. I think at this point, we're just discussing the problems with feudalism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feudalism is the worst system. <laughs> just to be on that. Oh, boy. Well, I, I think Martin just wanted to have this, this you know, the, a civil war in the Targaryen timeline. And so he inserted oh, it, it, it in. Itself. So, and that's why all these complications are come, coming from that. I, you know, I think it's moot arguing why was there a civil war in the first place. You know, it's it's fun. <laughs> it's certainly... It certainly lends saying. itself to great storytelling. It's just, if we're trying to discuss the rationality of a lot of it, we're yeah. going to get it <laughs> People just we, wanted to be king. I have to say, it's we really interesting. Free cities are awful, too. Oh, yeah. Sorry? Like, fuck you, free cities. This isn't your business. Oh, oh yeah. that was interesting, right? So the yeah. free cities, Lys, Mary, uh, uh, Lys, Mare, and this other one, they were all Tyra. one, Smear, the triarchy, right? So they were all yeah. together. And but during our time, they're all having civil wars now. They're yeah, all fighting they're each so other with petty with that they invade that. just because of Daemon Targaryen. Like, <laughs> screw oh, okay. you! That is unbelievable. Well, that is well, unbelievable well. in a book about Targaryens being unbelievable. <laughs> I guess you could argue that they don't want him to be king of the Seven Kingdoms, yeah. or he's going to just obliterate them. So there is a sort of a preemptive strike against him becoming king. Okay, because he was a mercenary in in their war right at some yeah. point, and he that kind of overpowered them with that. Stuff to go over. I would. He's I'd described as an adventurer, so yeah, we might yeah. get some more on yeah. him in the, in the world. And of he also just that. randomly decides to start sleeping with a thirteen-year-old. <laughs> I think she's sixteen. I think she's, she's 16. thirteen. Yeah, she's sixteen. She's woman girl. She's sixteen. Ten. Oh, yeah. woman girl. No. She's not thirteen. <laughs> it's fine. Also, she's wait. sixteen. <laughs> He's old. He's the dead he king's mother. Yeah, I think it was no, 49. This is pretty much died. medieval history, right? And 13 is old enough at that time. So. But okay, so let's finally talk about <laughs> Nettle. Is she a bastard or not? Well, I just, I just want to say chill. with the, with the free cities. A... Um, oh, sorry. Sorry. No, 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 what were you saying? I, uh, one thing I think you do notice with this story is how much more contact and how much more dialogue you see between yeah. the, the free cities and Westeros. And I think that's probably owed to the Valerians being basically SOC, if that's the plural of Essos, um, coming over. So there is a lot more dialogue. So you see the Bravosi taking in a third of the crown's money. You see, uh, I think it's the Tyroshi taking in refugees and Mir and I think Pentos are com so, yeah. coming over basically to get involved in the war. So um, I think the, the Westeros we see in the War of the Five Kings is far more self-enclosed, far more yeah, concerned yeah. with its own um, inner fighting and inner war. And that's kind of regressing that's, that's to medi medievalism. Very, I'm sorry. I think that's very but, yeah. likely very recent, though. Mm. 
with uh, yeah, but maybe it was well, the Targaryen think, connection. I think the Targaryens, that... yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it it's was their link to Essos, so yeah. The Nine Penny Kings was a war with yeah. Essos. That was right. nine adventurers or something, and they the Targaryens helped, or the yeah the Targaryens helped retake whatever city it was that had been taken by the the Nine Penny adventurers. Hmm. That but I think since Fires. Robert's Rebellion, they've lost a lot of that contact yeah. with Essos because uh, the Targaryens were their connection to Essos. Wait, whoa, just imagine this. So imagine you're imagine you're not even like some southerner. Imagine you're like some Pentashi dude and then like the White Wolves and Roddy the Ruin come like riding at you. Like if you're some like <laughs> Sozy, like water, like what are the, what are the Bravosi? Back on the ship. <laughs> they're, they're like water dancers. Not messing with they, these guys. Like, nope. Not doing this. Goodbye. <laughs> Even so, well, if, if you're damage. all like Talisa, you apparently just come to random war-torn areas because it just like no, you like sure. to. Game so maybe they're like, yeah. <laughs> well, they uh, describe so... the kind of awe that the the Pentosh, the Pentoshi sailors, or maybe it's the Brothers. I can never remember which free city is, but the awe well, the sailors have when they're when they're traveling over from Essos because they see oh. these two dragons going the at each other. And Those they haven't balls. seen that. Okay. Like the dragons are basically wiped out in the in Essos. Like Westeros is kind of the last safe haven of the of the dragons. So um, yeah, it's it's interesting that, that yeah, it this, looks like the Doom proposal. took all the dragons with them, and only because one Targaryen family or one Valerian family existed on Dragonstone. Uh, yeah. Well, I wonder if it's that. that well, the common theory is that it basically a volcanic eruption kind of destroyed everything. But now I'm thinking that it might be the dragons just being fed up with all their humans making them fight each other. It's turning <laughs> yeah. on the humans. But then the dragons wouldn't have died, right? I like to think that there's a bunch of wild dragons just kind of living peacefully away from humans in the ruins of Valeria. Uh, that's why no one. People the... think they're in a shy, yeah. right? But yeah. at least yeah. that's where the eggs yeah. came from. So maybe. Well, N- Nettles gets gets away with a fully formed dragon, so maybe there are some yeah. living. Uh, I think three dragons survive, which is Cannibal, Silver Wing, and then uh, and then Nettles Dragon, uh, Sheep Sheep Stealer. It's so freaking sad to me that like like they just all seem to accept that when dragon goes against dragon, like nobody's expecting to come out alive here. Like Mm. maybe the people are, but like the dragons. Like I don't think we see a single one other than than um, that first one. Yeah. Yeah. That both dragons survive. Maybe maybe sun sunfire, but that's like, you know, debatable. And that's it's true. just you know, and and like the fact that like Bela just like, you know, is like okay, I'm just I'm going against this dragon. I mean, it's it's just such a tragedy. <laughs> the whole thing is so sad. Like, yeah. well, it's sad for the dragons because this is the first time they've ever faced one of their own kind. I mean, there's probably yeah, in the past, but it's like they, they used to. Well, they used to. They they can easily destroy armies of men, but fighting themselves it, it means certain death because they actually have the physical power to to tear out their own throats well, and tear through their own scales. Oh, wait, wait, one question. One question. So I, I think the metaphor of one the question. two brothers is, dying on each other's swords is. And is Sunfire attacked Grey Ghost by itself. Also, it didn't have to like uh, you know nobody probed it to go. It and ultimately, it just weakens it's... both of them. Yeah, uh-huh. it's like the two houses, um, the two halves of the houses, for... devouring each other. Wait, isn't cannibals the still alive? Silverwing had come against yeah, each other. So. They have, but they have actually because they seem pretty fond of each other, right? Um, Alisan and Jaehaerys's dragons. Uh, who uh, would they have hey, attacked each other? Do you mean Daeron's and uh, Adam's dragon? Vermitor was, I think. Yeah. Whose dragon? King Jaehaerys oh, yeah. and Silverwing. Yeah, Vermitor. Yeah. yeah, and he, yeah, he was the biggest dragon among the group. Uh, yeah. So and they seem really fond of each other, right? Yeah, the two I dragons. So. Um. Yeah. So if their riders had been on opposite sides, what would have happened then? Who knows? I mean, I, I part part of me wonders if Danny's other dragons might get saddled by somebody, and we might see something like that. Because I don't know. It it seems to me like this is setting up like dragon fighting dragon, because otherwise it's just a slaughter, you know. Um, like we were talking about yeah. three hours ago, but um. <laughs> You know, I think Danny is very much kind of like I don't think she is going to be this glorious resurrection of House Targaryen. I think it's just going to be this last gasp before it, the last yeah. dragons are killed off. Either oh, either she might play a role risk. in fighting the she might play a role in fighting the others, but I don't think her dragons are going to survive. Mm. Yeah, I feel like the title of this should be "Fuck the Targaryens." <laughs> <laughs> 
That, that's what I was going to say. Did this ruin your uh, impression of the Targaryen family a bit? Yes. You know, I mean, up till now, it's always been Danny Targaryen. Well, you know. again, it's just individuals. You can't sort of group them all into a single thing. Like, yeah. as I say, every man. Yeah, yes. I mean, the Starks, the Starks every... used to, you know, carry out human sacrifice. So they weren't exactly. Yeah, but yeah. human sacrifice is better than feeding people to your dragons. But wait, hang on. Let's 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 yeah, go. Anyway. Let's have some perspective here. We we know in great detail about the War of Five Kings, and there is not not a Targaryen nor a dragon to be seen, and that wreaks pretty uh, kind of a lot of havoc in Westeros. And I and on top of that, the person who started this whole thing, or the people who started this whole thing, Alison Hightower and Kristen Cole, were not Targaryens. So I. As much as as unfond of the Targaryens as I am, and I also came out of this being like fuck the Targaryens, I don't think that you can necessarily lay the whole the whole heap at their feet. Yeah, True. I would say it's a couple of Targaryens in this fight, and a couple of other lords that are not related to the Targaryens at all that caused this mayhem. Like uh, Aemon is it's the worst Aemon and Daemon basically. Aemon and Daemon yeah, turned Damon. this yeah. from a from a from a conflict into a war. Yeah. I mean, those are all fair and reasonable points, but I've been drinking it's just, for the past but, it's just, nine hours. It's just the fact that they have such enormous weapons to do to to yeah. express their horror that makes them uh, makes it such a horrible system. But I think on either uh, side yeah. of this conflict, yes, the the tugs in this in this scenario are horrible. Um, but on either side, you've got uh, the people we see in Dunk and Egg, the Targaryens we see there, most of whom seem pretty nice and pretty great, um, and the mm-hmm. Targs on the other side, which is Jaehaerys and Alysanne, which is every mention I get of them just makes me love them more. They're awesome. And yeah. it's interesting how the story ended, right? Because I thought when Re- Renita died and Aegon II crown- is crowned the king, I thought they- that's the end of Dance of Dragons. But no, he says, no, there's another black army forming up and, and stuff happens. It's so it's like, yeah, you're right. The Targaryens are not to blame, you know. Even with the main claimants gone, it's still happening. Also, we should um, keep so- in mind that this civil war is, like, not a common thing. This is an enormous yeah. event, and it's it's treated as an absolute holocaust. Like, there's only yeah. been, like, maybe three or four civil wars in the past 300 years. You've got Robert's Rebellion and... Uh, the War of the Seven King, uh, the War of the Five Kings in recent history, obviously. But other than that, all you've got yeah, the is Black uh, Rebellion. the Black Fire Rebellion and and the Dance of the Dragons. So in 300 years, mm. you've got maybe five or six years of absolute horror. But it compares to relative peace in the other years. Did anyone yeah, think it was interesting that uh, yeah. winter came during this story? Also, yeah, winter has suspicious timing. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, also the feed, feeding off the misery. When, when was the last to... winter in the story? Was it was it concurrent with the Greyjoy Rebellion or no? No. But... I think it was around the time when Arya was born, maybe. Yeah, yeah I mean, like Tyrion says ago? he was a kid when he when he yeah, saw yeah, Winter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, they had summer for ten years, I think. Yeah, I think they've had. Yeah, it's been summer for. It's 10 been years. the longest and summer. And probably they spring had. before that. Spring before that, right? Probably well, I would there, say yeah. that it would be hard for the Greyjoys to rebel during the winter if the waters freeze over, but maybe that's not accurate. It was probably spring. I, I think mm. that perhaps. Yeah. Hmm. So nettles. Okay. Yeah. Let's get to nettles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Alice Rivers. What nettles happens to awesome. Alice Rivers? We, we actually we have a good couple of missing people that were I I was I was writing about in my um, post on the thing. Um, we have we have Nettles, we have Alice, Maylor. we have her child, we have Maylor, and we have Jahera. Um, and is that all the Jahera missing people? And, and Viserys, Viserys, the the youngest of Rhaenyra's children, he's missing at this point as well, right? Mm-hmm. Aegon oh, the really? Third's, uh, Aegon the Third's brother. Yeah, she thinks he's dead because oh. she thinks you know Aegon is her last living son. Um, basically, he was taken at the Battle of the Gullet. Um, mm, yeah, and... but so he's dead oh, then, yeah. right? No, he's not dead. He eventually oh. becomes king. Uh, Aegon the Third becomes. He the becomes king. king. Yeah, but after Aegon the Third and his sons die, Viserys becomes king. And then Aegon the unla- Aegon the whatever the one who had all the bastards, he's Viserys' son. <laughs> Maybe he wasn't was even a, a Viserys. Maybe he was a poser, and all the Targaryens now aren't Targaryens. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, who knows? No, Maybe no, Martin changed his mind. Him, I, think, I think somebody captured him at the Battle of the Gullet, and yeah. Renera thinks he's dead, but he's not. Okay, right, right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. I wish we'd gotten a few more about nettles because, like, we only get one. Well, and Chihira, Chihira eventually marries Aegon the Third. Oh, wait, hang Chihira. on one second. Chihira, who is Aegon the Second's daughter, marries Aegon the Third. Wait, the series the second and or series the third is the series the second. the wait the second whoever right. is the Daenerys son. Okay, because the third is is our series from yeah. from yeah Game okay. of Thrones. So okay. yeah, so oh you're right. Daenerys son, Daenerys son, and Aegon's daughter eventually marry, and it's sort of the joining of the line. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. The the second Aegon son uh, marries. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. Okay. That finally I think it was proposed also, right? Uh, that let's make peace and let's do this thing and uh, get everything done. Yeah. I think Lord Valerian, the sea snake, proposes it, but then she gets thrown in prison. <laughs> so I think I sort of wondered if Nettles was a little bit of Martin's. Like it seemed almost a little anachronistic to me. Um, yeah, because she is the one who doesn't look like a. World. Yeah, she. It seems like she doesn't look like a Targaryen at all, right? First of all, she's a brown of skin, black of hair, brown of eyes. So, is this him saying that all the Targaryens don't actually look like Targaryens, and Jon Snow is a secret Targaryen, or <laughs> or, it, or it says the target? You don't have to be a Targaryen to yeah. ride a dragon. I don't think she's a Targaryen. I don't think so. Yeah, Maybe it's I him don't... just saying like, look at this ch- chill girl who is awesome and tames a dragon and is the greatest. But yeah, she could be, right? She could that you just don't... have. She could just take after her mother. Yeah. Or she could be like a remote Targaryen descendant. Like I mean, maybe no. great great grandparents was a Targaryen. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's what it. that's what Quentin thought, right? That he has a bit of Targaryen blood. Well, it worked for Quentin. Uh, it did. Uh, you know, for, for yeah, worked. for those few seconds, yeah. one of the dragons was cool with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not it's his fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not. He just forgot about the other dragon. <laughs> Everything always comes around to bashing Quentin. <laughs> <laughs> to she was actually pretty clever. She just, you know, she just sort of, um, you know, became friends with the dragon. You know, she just gave him a sheep every day and eventually yeah. became used to her. And then. Did you think that black ram meant anything or was that just, he seemed to go into a lot of detail about sacrificing that black ram I, I was wondering where they got that from like yeah um, it just seemed out of just really out of place all of a sudden which sorry oh when, the uh, last time we see nettle uh they, yeah. they have breakfast and they leave the blackwoods right uh, was it the blackwoods or somebody no, else? It's the Mutons. Mutons, oh, right. So... Mutant. how do you pronounce that i actually i really liked that whole incident because i i felt That's like favorite part of the book yeah, two. and and you could tell the Lord Mooton also like I, the Maester was obviously like the hero of the thing, but but Lord Mooton was also like I'm not cool with this. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't willing to just he didn't kill him. Do it either. Yeah, he became yeah. a green after that, just because it was such a lowly act that was asked of him. So that's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just hard to speculate on what might have happened to Nettles because obviously yeah. we have no information, but like there is this kind of potentially rogue dragon that you know i mean i don't know do we have any other brown skinned people in this story i I feel like other than brown ben plum i can't think of it there's a crazy theory that uh, brown ben plum Plum is the descendant of uh, (laughs) nettles that's That's why the dragons like him that's just yeah i know it's 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 stupid but yeah look there's two brown people they're related (laughs) but are they the only two brown people in the whole story (laughs) I mean, aren't the, the Danish supposed oh, no, to be all brown, right? It's, but they're like copper or no, they're ebony. Gone. It's the fact that the dragon likes him. Yeah, I don't think that the brown, the brown ben, ben Plum thing, I don't think that's ridiculous on account of the dragon comparison. Um, but, but I mean, who knows? Like, yeah. I mean, there is, there is Targaryen blood in the Plum line uh, that we know of other than this. So it did... I just was yeah. thinking. I just couldn't think of anyone else that has, has described this. Separate. Also, so. this also points out and says if you have Targaryen blood, doesn't automatically mean that you could be a dragon rider, right? Because a bunch yeah. of the dragon seeds got killed. Yeah, uh, I think they might even be using the wrong variable. They're actually assuming that Targaryen blood is what's doing it, but it might not be that at all. Like the three people they might have got might not even have 
Targaryen blood. They might just have what it takes, some something in their personality, whether it be this big kind of bold rashness of Hugh the Hull or the kind of uh, slow I think, um, uh, no, bonding Hugh the that, Hammer. that Nettles... I don't know if I think was a Valerian. Nettles... So. Yeah, and also Aim and uh, tamed Vega, the oldest of dragons. So that guy must have been a kid, right? And he could have. Been, I guess he had an option to take an egg, but no, he went with with the biggest dragon in the realm. Yeah, well, it, it seems to be either if you're really bold and strong, the dragon will respect you, or if you do it really slowly and gain the dragon's trust, the way Nettles did by feeding a sheep, then you can do it as well. Yeah. So this is good then. So Victarion has a chance of taming one of Danny's dragons. No. Shut up, Vikram. <laughs> God damn it, Vikram. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> so I just—you want to hear something really weird? I was just looking up more of the the family tree stuff. So not only is Damon the uncle and husband of Rhaenyra, yeah, uncle husband, but also has children in his first marriage, in which he was yeah, married was to Rhaenyra's Lena. first Lena. husband's sister. Yeah, and and he had and that's that's who Bela was born from, I think. The moon. Yeah, that's. They were married to a brother and sister, and they're like, nah, fuck it, let's just get married. So think, Bela, Bela is Damon's daughter. Yeah. Daughter. Yeah, from his okay. first and wife. also, he's also, he, he, he is the daughter, she is the daughter and, nef- and niece and sister-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> My brain breaks. You know what? I would be, I would be <laughs> appalled, but since they're Targaryens, you know? Yeah, I think I think it first kind of hit me when she said her uncle and husband Damon. <laughs> as oh, okay, this is Targaryen stuff. So let's move on. <laughs> yeah, like if you're not gonna flinch to to at a Aegon Aegon and Helena being married and her mother crowning her, you know, my my son and my king, my daughter and my queen, yeah. you know, then uncle uncle niece is not even that bad. <laughs> And and kind of what hurts me was Aegon was actually or oh, sorry uh, yeah Aegon Aegon was actually cheating on his sister. That's so that's mm-hmm. like like double douchebag or something. Well, well, well maybe you don't want to have sex. Yeah. Sister. Well, <laughs> they found him with the. Had three the, children. A, Guys, sister nephew, sister nephew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh boy. Yeah. Oh wait. So you're your own cousin, right? If you. Right, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to ask you, from this story, does this give you any clues on how the story is going to end? I mean, the Song of Ice and Fire is going to end. Anything that hints at st- any hints, any extrapolations and stuff like that? Well, after reading it, I think there might be a possible second dance between Aegon and Daenerys. Like, he'll actually, um, he's got Varys, he's man in King's Landing. Varys, who... Maybe this is a bit of a leap, but I assume is the uh, High Sparrow and will use the Faith Militia to take over King's Landing and put um, Aegon on the throne. And then Daenerys will get there to find a Targaryen dynasty is already in place and she'll have to try and fight it to get, get her name in, uh, in, uh, in the throne. The thing is that this civil war, if it happens, is going to be like, like Dance of the Dragons times the Blackfire Rebellion because you have both elements yeah. going on here. Yeah. Well, I think that saving the uh, Aegon... Well, I was going to say, they were saving Aegon's hand for Danny, right? So when Danny shows up, they'll be like, ah, oh, let's marry, let's be king and queen. So, That's yeah. a really, I mean, it's, it's a smart idea because we know that Danny is powerful and has dragons, but from their perspective, it's a total waste. Well, what might happen would be that the Dornish will find out what Danny has done to Quentin, and they will spurn her and choose Aegon instead. And what they could do is actually, they've got Mar- Marcella. Uh, in their company, so they could marry Marcella to Aegon, which would give him right to the Iron Throne through the Targaryen and the uh, Baratheon line. He's not going to marry Marcella, Yeah, though. what's that do for them, though? Yeah, yeah. Who's the Dornish princess? Uh, Arian. But they're already, Arian. they're already Arian. allied. Yeah. They're already so, allied with the... Uh, also, the, Arian the is... Yeah, Arian is stupid to marry Arian for Aegon, at least. Arian's going to yeah. wrap Aegon around her finger. Wait, I think they're trying <laughs> the to marry tar- Arian to Griffin, I think. Oh, no, Aegon no, Griffin. No, no, no. They are, they are, but it's No spoilers, no spoilers. Well, no spoilers, it was only speculation, of course. (laughs) No, 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 but but Ariane actually says, oh, sorry, uh, never mind. Thank you. There's no political benefit to marrying the Dornish. Like, the Targaryens already have the Dornish in their pocket. They wouldn't waste a marriage on them. But 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 it would would end, though. It would make it much, much firmer, whereas Dany is just like this potentially barren... 
like no, other no arm of the they don't clan. I don't that. see any other else. Like, who else would they want to marry into? All right, Aegon and uh, Arian are cousins, so that would be disturbing, also. Yeah. Well, that's normal in Targaryen line. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not even it. <laughs> cousins, yeah, us, nothing. <laughs> But this is also, it's actually, I think it's going to be less like the Dance with Dragons if they fight and more like a mixture of the Blackfire Rebellion and the Conquest. Because like the whole like small armies thing has already been forgotten. There's not going to be anyone being like, look at our 2,000 man armies. There's just going to be like these huge 50,000 man groups getting torched. Do you think Aegon uh, yeah. will get a dragon? No, but like the, the armies will exist and who knows what Danny's going to do with the dragons. But, but actually, I mean, thinking it's totally random, but we do have a lot of, of um, dragon eggs that are kind of hopping through the story. Yeah, there's the three. And aren't those the three fails? Presumably, uh, that's what I was no, thinking, but I don't know that for sure. And did a well, bunch they go of to the them veil. on Dragonstone, right? But well, they're not going to be able to hatch a dragon and train it to full size within two books. No, but you don't think that. I mean, if if I were Varys, that would be on my list. I mean, you know, if if you know that Danny has dragons, which presumably he does. But the only way to hatch a dragon is to use magic, and Varys wouldn't allow it. I think. Mm. Not anymore. Uh, I mean, I not so. like these dragons. I think that was like a, oh, these, these are actually like yeah. Yeah, because Those only dragons fossil are dragons are left. Fossil eggs, I mean. Yeah. Well, we don't necessarily know that. Yeah, we don't know that for sure. There could yeah, be. Yeah, Danny's eggs were supposed to be fossils as well. Yeah. But she hatched them. Mm. See, the reason I think Danny's Danny's dragons were the whole death must pay, pay for life thing is because those those dragons, those eggs were dead. They were stone. But if you had a an unfossilized, you know, just unhatched dragon egg, you know, maybe you could. However, however they normally hatch, which we don't know, maybe you could could arrange something like that. Why was the fifth book called Dance I think Dragons? You could do uh... So, because it focused on the three heads of the dragon. Oh yeah, maybe maybe in, uh, in Dragonstone, maybe they're still John, yeah, Danny, exactly. and can, Tyrion. <laughs> <laughs> or it was setting up a rivalry between Aegon and Danny, right? So they are meant to fight each other. Yeah, I think that book just finished before its third act had begun. <laughs> Do you guys think that um um Ray Ray Le knew about the blood and cheese plot because the story is kind of no admitting it seemed okay. like it. Yeah, so after she died, right? she was basically on autopilot or something. But she didn't try and stop it, and she didn't, and she let it be in her name that that happened. But I think it was Daron, uh, Damon who initiated it, right? And he was in Harrenhal yeah. at the time, yeah, so he, he may not there. even have contact. Yeah, yeah I think he, he said the his... Raven. I think when they heard that Luke died, Joffrey was gonna get on his dragon to go, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and but he got stopped in it. And then the Raven came from uh, Dragonstone saying. Uh, what what is it an eye for an eye so if uh, sun for a sun sun for a sun so sun so Rhaenyra had, <laughs> so yeah, had an option so Rhaenyra had an option of saying not to sun. do it right yeah you know what devil's advocate devil's advocate Damon is trying to avoid all the horrors of war instead of being like let's fight a big battle he's just trying to be like you know what let's just do this personally you kill a son we kill a son Okay, Let's so then face. why don't you go, hey, Aemon, Tar- Aemon Targaryen, I will duel you, and whoever wins, he does, he exactly does later. But he's trying to get the duel going earlier. It's not his but fault Aemon's a bitch about it. He could have, he could have, oh. I, I, I think it would have been fully within Daemon's power to track down Aemon Targaryen. A- Aemon Targaryen is a freaking wuss, okay? I think that he could have he could have taken him out. I don't know if that would have ended the war, but I think that he could have dealt with this in a in a much more civilized way by killing somebody yeah. else. Oh, I totally agree. Well, I'm just well, the, saying. I think it was that Mikhail are... that said the best option would have simply been to kidnap the queen, uh, the queen's, uh, the princess, and their children, and then they would have hostages to uh, position, you know, for tactical advantage. Killing them does yeah. nothing. It's pure pure act of cruelty and sadism. Uh, when they could have actually position blood and cheese into a military advantage or a political advantage but they did nothing they're just but idiots also they don't know how to fight a war or, but also and lee suggested this right right i mean it would have been imp- kind of hard to get them out of the castle without noticing or without I don't even know that at all i think, I think these, however these, however they nothing. got in they could have gotten out yeah, mm-hmm. yeah there's passages they used a passage a secret passage yeah, into to the get hands out. yeah they could have used those to get out and and presumably they knew they knew the way out right and anyone going into those tunnels for the first time wouldn't so they could have just have, you know, hidden somewhere until they had done searching or they could have just, the others would have gotten lost. And that would have Anyone put Rhaenyra, to look after them. 
Yeah, and that would put Rhaenyra into such a so much stronger of a position if she has not only the heir but the the spare and the daughter and the queen, and, if... and then shows and then puts them in royal apartments and then and is like you know I'm I, I'm exactly, so glad yeah. to see my sis my my half sister again and my <laughs> half nieces and nephews you know and writes and writes a letter saying you know it would it would destroy me to have to whatever to to end their lives you know uh, based on your stubbornness Aegon you know th- th- it that's it that's the war well any it other writer would have done that but this is Martin he wants <laughs> blood <laughs> blood it would have it would have given them the moral high ground in front of exactly. all the exactly they yeah. killed the son and all they did was kidnap them and use it into a political advantage it would have yeah mm-hmm. it would have been a really smart move I think it just targaryen. shows how they're targaryens but what I think is it yeah, the Lord of the Rings are what? No, everybody dies in Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did, did you guys see that that image that was going around for like all the books with the the post-it notes yeah. stuck on pages? Yeah. Could somebody please do that for this because it will literally be every page. I was I was in my car and my jaw was like on on the floor of my car. And I was just like, oh my god, another one? Are you serious? I think every single Targaryen is... that we meet in this story dies. Yeah, yeah I read a review <laughs> where it says it makes, history, a, right? it makes a song of ice and fire, in a review a guy said, it makes a song of ice and fire look like Care Bears on Ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, compared to the Targaryens, the Lannisters seem like nice people. <laughs> yeah, you gotta step I it mean... up. <laughs> No, Nadi, I think that's a good point that this is obviously condensed, so it's it's much more, you know, punch, punch, punch than the books. Um, but still, just the carnage is, is colossal. Yeah. yeah, pretty much all the Targaryens die. Yeah. Well, you see the, the carnage the dragons can wield and would have been wielded if the Lannisters or the Starks had have had a dragon. So I think definitely you need to take, maybe not kill all the dragons, but you need to agree to take them out of the, uh, of the equation. They need like a dragon disarmament policy or something. Yeah. Um, oh, so guys, good. wait. Um, what happens to Darren? Darren, Darren. Oh, I'm the youngest son of Alison. Oh, he dies, right? Yeah, he dies in Tumbleton. He dies at the Battle oh, of Tumbleton. Okay. Yeah, yeah, when Adam oh, the Hutch yeah. shows up, his tent gets burned and some. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he gets just... killed or burns. Some it's... random man at arms would have killed him or something. It's actually weird that Allison Hightower, like, falls out of the story. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, I, cause... Yeah, that's why I feel like when we get the full story, it'll be a lot more. Because it's called The Princess and the Queen. As I, yeah, I thought it was going to be a battle between these two fierce women, but ultimately Alicent starts this conflict. She sets everything in motion, but then she just leaves it to her, her captains and her princes and her, yeah, all the other men. But to even, deliver. even I felt um, there wasn't even a lot of Renera. Or was that just me? Mm-hmm. No, you're right. I mean, there was half the time she wasn't, she wasn't... there. As yeah, it <coughs> yeah, was mostly time. Damon or Jace, you know, leading the forces. It wasn't her. It kind of feels the other like Martin shoehorned the story into this. Yeah, yeah basically, right? it didn't belong. Jace, the other interpretation Jace just of the title. Jace took over. She went after Sorry, Luke other... died. She basically went into hibernation or something, and then Jace had to take over. Yeah, I think the other way you can read the title is that. It's both titles are referring to Rhaenyra, that she starts off as a princess and everyone loves her and she becomes a queen. And as Tyrion says, the crown does you know, queer things to the head beneath and she becomes yeah, cruel and paranoid and delusional and she changes as a person. And the small folk that once loved her turn against her now that she's taken on the identity of a queen. You know what? That's yeah. another good thing to talk about. We could talk about the mob. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is this okay, I know. Team, team small folk. Oh, yeah, this is what's going to happen to Danny and Marine. I think all the people are going to rise up and do the same thing. Oh, I don't maybe. think they can find them though, because the dragons are like flying around, right? So yeah, they're not in a no, fit or something anymore. Yeah, and Marine is pretty much the freed slaves, right? And they're Danny's children, so yeah. I don't think that's yeah, happen. that's true. I just I thought that scene was like really sad. Like yes, I. And maybe actually it's worth talking about. I know I know they talked about this on the Boiled Leather episode about this, but the whole uh, this story kind of gives a lot more legitimacy to the Grand Maester conspiracy. But I, yeah. that that scene just made me like sad because it was like any any it was like the bear scene, and you know with with Jamie and Brienne. Like obviously I'm rooting for Jamie and Brienne, but like I feel bad for this creature that is not there of its own volition, you know and whatever i sound like such a bleeding heart but like it made me really sad that, yeah. you know no i mean it is sad they're animals yeah especially dreamfire didn't do anything right 
Yeah. yeah. She was probably in the in the pets all the all along, and her dragon rider died that day, and she she felt it and roared and everything. Yeah, and you feel like um, Tyraxes was probably just like, where's my rider? Where's my rider? <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I'm such a girl. <laughs> no. And Strykos is just a baby. Yeah. And I love I'm Team Dragon. After. Okay, I'm Team Dragon. <laughs> yeah. On the other hand, like, those dragons are unbelievably dangerous and have, like, will we'll account for... Like how many like how many deaths is a dragon like like Vagar responsible for over the course of its life? Thousands, yeah, tens so of thousands. That's the dragon rider. Hundreds of thousands. Yeah. That's the person the holding the gun. I don't really know. I don't. I mean, no, it's not. It's not quite. They, they brought they brought Vagar to war, right? He was. Yeah. He would have been happy living in Dragonmont in the Dragonmont. And also the dragons that were in the city, it was it was almost it was almost like a escape dragon type of situation. I mean, they were not the ones who were attacking or would be attacking the people in King's Landing, but you know. Yeah, if anything, they were defend going to defend well, against the. Uh... I mean, yes. Again, I understand that they're an insanely volatile force and why people wouldn't want them in the city. Yeah. But I don't know why that, other than like madness, the response to that is okay. Let's. Let's spend two thousand people and go kill them. Madness. Yeah, well, it's yeah, um, madness. I mean, you're right. I mean, they're basically just animal. They're gonna if they're tame beasts, they're gonna just do whatever their master tells them. If their master just wants to fly them around the ocean and fish, they'll do that. If they want to go to war, they'll do that. It's like a dog. You can't really blame a dog for following its master. Yeah, it's it's you it's, also, it's ultimately dogs, the master's fault. But a dog that I love dogs as much as anyone, but yeah. a dog that kills and kills and kills is and maybe not a dog down, yeah. in the city yeah but i mean you can't apply this kind of evil sort of conscience to the to the dragons they're just animals yeah. they have the but potential for it's... enormous de- destruction but ultimately the yeah. accountability is on the on the person riding them again elephants in battle pretty much yeah. the same <laughs> the yeah, although elephants just kill don't the elephants instead <laughs> well uh, elephants do actually once they're yeah. they're they're, they're, they're um uh, they they panic pretty quickly, so if they hear a lot of you know loud sounds and stuff, they can react pretty badly to that. <laughs> I love I love elephants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess what's left is um, you know uh, one night marry or blood and cheese. <laughs> oh, sorry one one last point. Um, there's a nice bit of uh, foreshadowing with the phrase and the Northmen setting up all of these feasts of the dead all throughout the Riverlands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. So, that, I forgot that. That is maybe my favorite part of the whole novella. Yeah, the Real description is fantastic. They were cutting as always. <laughs> it's Hang on. so... He is, his horror writing is so fucking freaky. So, like, that is a terrifying image. I think yeah. somebody in Westeros pointed out that is this like the, you know, the White Walkers coming to life, the zombies coming to life and doing stuff. Yeah, the quote is, um, elsewhere his scouts came across ghastly tableaus where armored corpses sat beneath the trees in rotting raiment in a grotesque mockery of a feast. The feasters were men who had fallen in battles, skulls grinning under rusted helms as their, fle- as their green and rotted flesh sloughed off their bones. So I love some of the horror imagery. It's awesome. It was actually nice not to get that much of it. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like yeah. that. That's like a sliver of one of Arya's chapters, you know, and then... Uh, I think it's worse than But Arya's maybe were, that, that whole feast was just to set up the next one where there were actually soldiers. Right, um, an ambush. And then, yeah. I, think it's a nice, yeah. I think it's a nice comparison to what Danny sees in the House of the Undying with the red redding. Mm, just yeah. this life, lifeless corpses sitting in like a mockery of a feast. And obviously, in this case, it's the, the Northmen and the Freys working together to, to bring down the green. But obviously, they have a reunion a couple hundred years later. <laughs> oh, man. Um, the Freys actually seem pretty um, uh, powerful here. And I mean, competent, pretty yeah. Strong. They have yeah. a lot of men, men and... Yeah, yeah, they brought the archers, right? The Riverlands alone known for their archers, which is interesting. Just the lesson, the whole moral of the story and of A Song of Ice and Fire, don't live in the Riverlands. Yep. <laughs> exactly, definitely. That's the <laughs> moral of the story. Screwed. Riverlands sucks. <laughs> if you are bored and find fire. yourself living in the Riverlands, move. It's just a quagmire of blood. <laughs> but the, they have the, the best the weather, season. right? <laughs> it's and not too cold. Yeah, it rains like the blood north. every day. It's, it's not. You're not like, it's not too hot it. like dawn. It's like nice, comfortable weather. That's yeah, but, but what's the point if you're dead? 
<laughs> yeah, enjoy looking up at the weather. Um, they also have the food. <laughs> you know, you're probably not going to go hungry in the normal normal area of things. Like, if you're a peasant in the Vale, like, good luck. Hey, there's uh, plenty of food. The Vale is yeah, rich. The Vale is yeah, vale super fertile. Vale oh, that's true. You're right. I was more yeah. thinking of, like, the mountains. I don't know. Really, I think the moral of the story is don't live in the Reach. Don't live in the Vale. Don't live on the Iron Islands. Don't live anywhere. Just live somewhere, like, warm. Just move to the Summer Isles. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. No, Dorne, I think, is pretty safe. Dorne yeah, I'd live in Dorne. Snakes, yeah, what you want to be is a minor is a minor noble in Dorne. That's who you want to yeah. be. I think live in, White Harbor seems to be the best place. It's never really been attacked, and it's it's run by the stocks. True. Yeah. I like White Harbor. And it's a city, so you get like all the luxuries of the world. You still have access to it, and you can travel to other places. True. Hey, I'm a Manderley. We all know where I want to live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anywhere but King's Landing, right? Oh, God. Yeah. Rat's nest. Yeah, no, King's Landing, not. But then again, I live in New York, so... <laughs> 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 the King's well, Landing of America. <laughs> well, Washington would be the King's Landing, and New York would be Old Town. Old Town? Maybe yeah. Moles Town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'm, I would love to, like, read that last scene where, where Rhaenyra is such a badass, but I can't find the text of this thing anywhere. Right, when the two dragons shows up, she's actually glad, and she turns the dragon around and charges at them. Wow. Yeah, she and she yeah, totally... She awesome. Yeah, she turns into such a, like badass right there she's just like you know you know whatever and he's like i'll see you in hell whatever but she's yeah. she's not even what, 55? yeah and i think she's 55 at the time which yeah. is practically ancient yeah no I she's like 35 isn't she no 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 nah, that's uh rainy jace and jace and luke are her grandkids and they're pretty oh, oh oh okay right we're talking about different people no yeah. Ra- rainy's is also awesome but i was talking about about yeah, that... um oh you were talking about the final that dragon yeah the... right. yeah like when they kind of have their showdown. Oh, right. She oh, actually Vera? laughed and said, who did this to Sunfire or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, she showed oh, no yeah, fear was... at all. Yeah. Did she have to sell she's her sexy. crown also to get to Dragonstone? Yeah, she did. Oh, I that's so, so sad. You know, that's like mm. the... That's like yeah. what happened to the czars at the end of the day, right? They got, you know... Like, <laughs> none of the noblemen wouldn't let them, let them into their castles as well. One of them only let them stay only for one night. It's like so sad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, again, Mughal history. Sorry to bring that up again. <laughs> but <laughs> the last Mughal king basically died destitute after, you know, the British took over. Um, he died in Burma um, and he didn't have anything. Um, Nadia, you and, sort of just, uh, <laughs> you and me, we should just get together and like geek out about, about the, the, the Mughal Mughal. <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying it wrong. I don't know. But, but, Mongols. Mongols. That's it. Yes, I'm sorry. No, no not Mongols. 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 Oh my god, I'm so ignorant. I apologize. No, no, no. The Mongols have actually descended from the Mongols. So. Oh, okay, cool. So you should just no, keep were... that together. Wait, the, the Mongols were Persians, <laughs> not Mongolians. No, no. Come on. Babel was descended from uh, Genghis Khan. Everyone uh, was hey, so. Wait. I mean, he no, came he from Afghanistan, of course, but, he was, but he was they were Persians. On his mother's side, uh, sorry, on his father's side, and from Genghis Khan on his father's uh, on his Not mother's side. Say, so. Wait, in, in, I actually don't know what language you speak. Presumably Hindi or Urdu or something. It's 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 Khan. Khan. It's yeah. Khan That's yes. really interesting. In Rush, in Russian, it's Khan as well. Um, yeah, it's actually. Have, um, Urdu and Russian are actually very similar. I had an uncle who lived in Russia for quite a long time, and he really? learned Russia Russian in a matter of months, I think, because he said it was so similar to Urdu. So are you kidding sound. me? Yeah. Oh, maybe I can learn Urdu then. Cool. Yeah. Actually, guys, that's the sound in the middle of my name Russia. that nobody can say. Like, huh? no, I can yeah. say me. I can <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, you. Yeah. Problem at all. I just thought it was like I thought you had a name like the Romanov, the first Romanov czar, which is Mikhail. But it's just yeah, me totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think my family comes from Russia. Some it is some a very. It's, I don't know. It's a very Russian name. Well, it's a guy's name, isn't it? In Russian, Mikhail is yeah. But yeah. I mean, it, it could also be Mi- Mikhaila or Mikhail. Right. 
Michal's a little different. I don't know. My name's Lee, which is impossibly un-Russian. <laughs> My every attempt to explain it ends with someone being like, no, that's My not your name. My name is Russian for some reason. Nadia is a very Russian name. Oh, yeah, it right, is. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's short for Nadiazda, which means hope. Yeah. Nadia is actually a name Aww. in a lot of languages. It's Arabic as well. Mm-hmm. So, but mine was Russian. My uncle had an obsession with Nadia uh, Komenichi. Oh. So. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So. It's a little creepy, but <laughs> no, not an obsession. Okay, <laughs> just like. <laughs> no, though to be fair, she is Romanian. Yeah, she's Romanian. I know, but it's a Russian name, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right, should we do the after show? I'm. It's yeah. like six thirty in the morning. The after show. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's cool. like a two and a half hour thing. I don't have a list of all the names in front of me to do this properly, oh, though. I guess we'll so just many. do it. Uh, you know, as it comes along, and uh, okay, so it's one night, Mary, or blood and cheese, and the, in the VOK fashion, the blood and cheese are for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start with um, uh, let's go with the greens first. Uh, so the queen, Alisand. Blood and cheese. Blood and cheese. <laughs> blood that cheese. Yeah. yeah. Wait, do, do we have to meet blood and cheese or do they? Yeah, yeah. In 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 Vio case, you get the blood, we and, get cheese. blood and cheese. I feel like if we yeah. do blood and cheese. Well, I'm gonna say one night then. I don't want to be. What's killed. the problem? <laughs> I'd marry Allison. She takes good care of your kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she gets them all killed. She gets yeah, them all exactly. They uh-huh. come in. And when uh-huh. you die, she lets your body rot for a week before she tells anybody. <laughs> ah, that was a great line. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from that, she's a dutiful wife. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah. And so, who else now? Eamon? No, no. Uh, let's go with the night, night, night commander. Uh, Christian, Christian Cole. Cole. Yep. Blood and cheese. Night commander? Blood and cheese. Ooh, yeah. Gross. Yeah, yeah, I don't think yeah. I'd want to night with cheese. him. He'll go to war against me. <laughs> right? <laughs> I actually thought he was uh, Alisan's lover or something. No, he's there. Yeah. Maybe. 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 That he had been Rhaenyra's that's lover just, years before and was that's spurred. Just rumor, I think it was Ariane. Right? That's rumor. Yeah, but he was wearing her favor at that thingy. Yeah. But he cool. was the Lord Commander of the uh, of the King's Guard, and you know it could just have been that, and she was the Crown Princess at the time. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, 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 just... there's a couple options. There's one that he wanted to uphold and our tradition, and the other that the more salacious one that he was her lover. And I think oh. Martin's and trying to say that we was... the, sorry. The third one was that uh, Aegon would be more pliable than Rhaenyra. Oh, right. But I think it's just sort of Martin trying to show that we prefer the more salacious one. But in, in reality, it could be any of those three. We kind of or, were more tempted or by probably, the other. Wasn't, was he the one who kind of raised the issue about Daemon? Uh, Daemon being, you know, the king consort and everything? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, okay, fair enough. But, like, because he would be an incredibly sucky king. But first of all, you don't know that. He's just judging the, by the fact that Rhaenyra is a woman. And also, okay, so if you need to, have him assassinated. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, the knights, the, the knights commander or the is like the general, right? If Damon became the king, he would, wouldn't need a general because he's the general himself. So, exactly. yeah, I think he was doing Yeah, I think he wouldn't position. have had power and he just, you know, he could have, he could, he could have had that with Aegon and that's why he went with him. Okay, so let's start with the f- f- second egg on then. Um, but marry one night or <laughs> pre or post burning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's important. <laughs> I would actually say post burning because he's a lot more pliable at that point. He's just like whatever. You could get out of it really quickly, uh, and you could rule the kingdom in his name. People. Exactly. <laughs> what yeah, was that like? Him- the key is that Michal likes them pliable. <laughs> Yeah, if you dope him up on Milk of the Poppy, you could just rule as the queen. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, you yeah. know what, actually, him refusing to take Milk of the Poppy after his legs both get shattered, that's pretty ballsy. He deserves credit for that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, so and... it's implied he got addicted to it, which is an interesting touch. Yeah. 
Right, yeah. and he's uh, he's you know he's quick to hang, her, but everybody seems to be able to successfully convince him the other way, right? I mean, he's always like, ah, you know, let's kill them, and then everybody's like, oh, no, yeah. no, hold off, let's do this instead, and he's willing to give. So I don't know what what the deal with that is. Is he not strong will at all? Yeah, he's a weak one. Aiken is almost like the embodiment of all the bitterness and hatred and horror that the two sides of these these this 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 faction has poured into. Like he's just he doesn't even want to be king at the beginning, but he's convinced exactly. to do it and convinced he's that his life is threatened yeah. and forced to be burned and forced to fight them and again and again. So it's almost like he just embodies all of that horror and but he just yeah. Is, fe- yeah, sorry. If if you're Aegon and I, I don't I don't know I just maybe it's because nobody's ever come to me and been like hey you're gonna be king now, but. I, I sort of think that like it was so it like there was no backing for for Allison's idea that oh she's for sure gonna kill all of us like why don't you like if you really think like no I'm not gonna go, go against my father's wishes Rhaenyra should really be queen and you're worried about that then you take your family and you you take them to I don't know the high towers or something and or you say you know like right or whatever okay if you don't want to leave the realm I get it but like. Just be like, I just need to know that you're not going to do anything and we're going to stay here for like a year and a half and, you know, make sure that there's a smooth transition. I don't know. I He's, you know, I, I think all of these people are on some level ambitious for mm-hmm. crowns that don't fit them. And because he he certainly like owns it well enough once once I mean, in a crappy way, but like once, you know, he's king, he's like, no, I'm the king and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so he has to be yeah, convinced into it. Yeah, bread and cheese for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so the kinslayer. I'm gonna die a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not really a lot of good the choices. The thing is, right? Yeah. The more of these people that you blood and cheese, the more small folk you save, right? So. True. Yeah, just select all blood and cheese. <laughs> Yeah, and we can't touch the kids who are the cool ones in the story. So yeah, we want to. Yeah, keep... they're all underage. Yeah, we want to keep it above eighteen here. Uh, <laughs> so the Kinslayer, Amy. Well, no, if they're, if they're thirteen, they're in yeah, bankrupt. Yeah, nobody cares about age. <laughs> <laughs> oh here, maybe if blood and cheese is going to be like the default for virtually every character, um, we should just, <laughs> which is true. We should only talk about pe- like if you if you have someone who you don't want to blood and cheese, say it specifically, and otherwise it's just assumed. <laughs> yeah, nettles maybe nettles. Yeah, and... yeah, uh, definitely. A princess Adam Helena Valerian, I think. Yeah, Adam yeah. Valerian, princess. Yeah, yeah princess Adam Valerian. Yes, I'll take Adam. Um, <laughs> nettles again. Uh, yeah, um, I would take Jace. Roddy He's ruined. 15, right. <laughs> Um, Roddy Rose. I'll take Alice Rivers, I guess. Oh, Alice Rivers, yeah. Yeah, she's cool. Um, I actually saw so much fan fiction in my head about Alice Rivers and, <laughs> and Amond, just because like <laughs> it's like such a volatile, crazy yeah. relationship, and she's like how old and pregnant, and like I don't know, it just seemed like. There is was she a... like? Does she have like visions or something? Because yeah, Amond yeah. mentions that. Yeah, it's like Mark Antony and Cleopatra or something. <laughs> I'm oh, trying to calm her down. He's right, ranting and raving. That marriage turned out really well for the Baratheons, I guess, right? That Aemon went into. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Yeah, yeah. Suck at Baratheons. <laughs> they kind of broke even, though. Yeah. I guess, they, yeah. You didn't really it's want to be the best, married That's to kind of the best anyway. outcome, really. Exactly. Yeah, yeah the Baratheons kind of like the didn't Lan- send like- any soldiers. Well, it's kind of like the Lannisters. They got a really early defeat, and then they just withdrew for the rest of the war. It's kind of the best outcome. Well, part of that's also because like all of their met, all of their lords died. Mm. Uh, oh, okay. Um, but that's no, kind of what you want to do because if, oh. if like whoever wins, you don't want to be fighting to the last nail because whoever if, if you if True. your guy doesn't win, they're going to wreak abject vengeance on you. But if you yeah. get defeated early and withdraw, then they're not going to they're going to leave you alone. And somebody yeah. as powerful as the Lannisters will always get a peace peace deal. You know, they won't be yeah. just subjugated. Or they'll I'd be dismantled marry, wholesale. I'd marry the Maid of the Veil. Vale I was going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> Sight <laughs> unseen. <laughs> So what no was the promise though. there? Do we know what the promise was that they made to her? Oh yeah. Maybe that she gets to keep being in charge. Because hmm. then, the, then they sent was it Joffrey or who had to go with his dragon to protect the veil? Yeah, Joffrey was sent. It was I think. the youngest Chase. one, I think. 
No, Joffrey never. No, it was Jace. Yeah, yeah, Jace. It was Jace. It was Jace. Yeah. And they had to convince but him. But the maid of the veil could have been sixty. She she was a maid, but she could have been sixty. We don't isn't know her age. Bi- isn't it bizarre that Robert took Joffrey as his firstborn's namesake? Like it just seems such yeah. an unremarkable <laughs> character in history. I wonder if there were more. I yeah. think Cersei would have named her children. I don't think Robert had anything. Yeah, I don't think Robert Choose the did. one that gets killed, who kills himself with a sword through the belly. By, or is by the other way? To... I think I think he didn't want a Targaryen name, and Joffrey is probably the least Targaryen name, I guess. Ah, okay. Just there's no other Joffrey, sucks. right, in the line? Yeah, there's no, no. Joffrey yeah, in the line. So, so. Well, so and she a... probably couldn't get away with naming him like one of those classic. Uh, yeah, Aegon or something. She <laughs> would. He would have killed her. Well, no, Cersei wouldn't want that, but like, like naming him like Ty something or or Lannis yeah. something, you know. I don't Lancer. think Robert would have stood for that. I mean, right, he exactly. Allowed her to name the kids, but I don't think Ty anything would have. Yeah. Ty Mund. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, so we are done with the green side of things. Uh, oh, Rainies! If Rainies had been any younger, <laughs> I would have, you know, married her. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the sea snake yeah. was pretty cool. But he was old too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he oh. seemed like an ups. He seemed like a cool guy. That was he the hand? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah he was. He, was he, he defended. He defended the uh, Adam guy. Yeah, he was good. Oh, I would marry the beast. I think. Guy. I think Adam was his bastard son or something because he he immediately took him as his, you know, heir. Uh uh-uh, uh no, you do not cheat on Rainies, okay? <laughs> no, but why would why was he so willing to take on this random guy for his heir? I think he yeah, just recognized right. he was a good guy, and he was a good guy. Like he was in contact with oh, him, and but, he realized he was an honorable this person. Bastard, this bastard kid, kid comes out of nowhere, takes a dragon, and you name him his heir. No, that does not work. Exactly, they didn't do that with Wolf the White and Hugh the Hammer, but with Adam but, Hurl and his yeah, brother. Yeah, but they are so obviously. They... It could have been one of his younger brothers' bastards. It's, it's, that's possible yeah. too. That's true. But You're probably so right. There's some yeah. connection there. Because eventually, like, sure, eventually, yeah. Adam's younger brother becomes uh, Lord Valerian, right? Yes, I think yeah. so. Such a, that's such a rare story in this world that like somebody actually like surpasses their birth and and makes good. That's like we should like treasure this. Like have a have a little picture of them in all of our minds. Like the two who made it, sort of. Oh, Littlefinger. Yeah. Davos. Oh come on. Uh, Littlefinger is not an example of anything. <laughs> yeah, it was yes. Chaos is a ladder, and he climbed it. <laughs> oh. uh, um, any other upstanding characters here? No. I was gonna say Beast, very guy. You know, he's very good. Uh, oh, he was ancient. <laughs> he was eighty. Well, but, let's just okay. If I were his age, then yes. Then who else? Uh... What about Archmaester Gildane? <laughs> he sounds chill. He does sound yeah. chill. He's a good writer. Uh, you know, the hammer. I mean, he's probably really old because he's an archmaester, but still. Ladies, what are your feelings on Hugh the Hammer? Oh, God. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've already got taken one dragon rider. We don't need another one. <laughs> I just, no. No. He, he, first of all, he Never. sounds totally rapey. Yeah. But also, no. <laughs> Somebody, yeah, no. Somebody uh, else talk now. We have a <laughs> Grandmaster Orwell also. Uh, it's it's interesting how, how uh, because the story is written by a maester, all the maesters get kind of highlights. The maester from uh, the the River Lord guy, kind of you know making out to be the him hero who's yeah. going to sacrifice himself. And then when he was talking about how Aegon had all the symbols of legitimacy, he said, "Oh, even Grandmaster Orwell <laughs> is with him. Who cares about Grandmaster?" <laughs> So who who do you think was uh, Aemon's man or no Damon's man on the the Green Council? Because they keep they keep alluding yeah. that he had a. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was to the mas- What happened uh, to the master? Who was on the council? It was Kristen Cole. It was um, Grandmaster Master Orwell and who who else was there? No, they were so Master Lance, of Coin, Master, Master one of the Lannisters. Master of and, and then what? one of the the master of whisperers. Oh, and wait, wh- couldn't the George have come up with like a more original original name, Varys Laris? I mean, Lark- he didn't even have to think about that. Lar- what, Varys, what is it with, Laris the Clubfoot. What is it with um with uh master of whisperers always being maimed? I don't know. Yeah. Eunuchs and clubfoots. 
Yeah. Maybe they're more trustworthy. Also, know. wasn't there somebody yeah. like the hair lip at some point? I don't think. Oh, yeah, 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 there was yeah. Some one guy. The gold cloak, right? The gold cloak was. Yes, uh... the gold cloaks actually came across as total bamps in this in this story. <laughs> yeah, they did. Robert really fucked that up too. Yeah. What? Although I don't know that that might have been on the decline for a while. Who knows? Yeah, yeah uh, there seem to be a lot of cutthroats among them. Yeah, though. they seemed they like I I didn't think they were great in this story. No. No. But like the gold cloaks nowadays would would not have even like made a show of taking down that I kind think, of mob. I think Jocelyn Bywater kind of whips them into shape. Yeah. But they had to. I mean, if they didn't, then the crowd would just overwhelm them and kill them. They had to sort of move against them quickly. Like well, it, was, it them, wasn't just their orders; it was their own lives they were protecting. Yeah, they were turn cloaks too. They switched sides and yeah. Although they did have that guy who was stripped of his cloak, and I like now nowadays like they're they're just like popping cloaks on anybody who can like walk. Yeah, yeah. it's the actually King's God. It's Littlefinger. Mm. Mm. Who? Which yeah. one was that? Blood or Cheese? Who? Who was the stripped gold cloak? Blood like, was blood. The, uh, blood. blood. Yeah, because Cheese uh, was the rat catcher. Right. Blood, blood, did blood beat... rape somebody or did blood? No, he beat a he beat a whore to death. Yeah. And, uh, and wasn't Allison, uh, Queen Allison's brother, uh, one of the high towers, used to be in charge of the gold cloaks right un- until Damon showed up and did the coup thing? Yeah. So that's interesting. The, the gold cloaks are the first ones to split sides. <laughs> the, um, oh, the hey, King's how about got blood up. and cheese for the whole Mally one night? Blood and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, they kept their word, so they're, they're the most honorable people on the uh, in the story. <laughs> You can't avoid them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are not creative enough not to keep their word. I have to say. Yeah, I that, know. That that actually that moment where um where wh- whichever one che- blood was like you better make a decision or cheese is going to rape your 8-year-old daughter was like the first no, I time think that well, was cheese saying blood will do that. Okay, know. well, whatever. <laughs> either way, <laughs> um either way that was like that was really like shades of the books for me. That, that where I was like that kind of horrible visceral like yeah. any, you know, that could have come out of the mouth of like any of, you know, um yeah. Biter, Roared, all those horrible people. Yeah, that's who they remind me like, of. Too. I think but... yeah. Um, I, I've, I was thinking, you know, this must have taken a huge toll on the children as well, right? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Medor wouldn't have remembered, but Jehera would have, right? Yeah. And this yeah. is a twin brother. And kind of the really same thing affected. happened to Aegon the Third, and they married each other, so their children must have been, you know, messed up as well. <laughs> Wait. Oh, he married Jehera? Yeah, he did. And they both were messed up, so oh. eventually their kids would have been messed up, so we can't really, you know, blame any of the following Targaryens for anything. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. I know. Yeah. I, guess, I guess it must have been my right. Father, it... My father my brother. Oh that's... my goodness. And Mailer, we don't, do we know anything about what happened to Mailer? He, I think he dies before Aegon the, th- Aegon the Second, because mm. Aegon the Second is said to have said to leave no male heirs, so I'm assuming uh, he dies sometime after right. the story ends. Yeah, that yeah. was... It was horrible. Ugh, I... Do. I can't. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Helena's reaction was just so. Oh. I know. Yeah. I wanted somebody to be like, to like be her therapist and like, you know, obviously there's yeah, no way to like recover from that, but chose, help her. She chose one son over the other and then the other one gets murdered. I, that's just horrible. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a form of psychological torture. Like, not sure. only does he yeah. take one of their heirs, but he actually creates this uh, psychological trauma for this woman that would probably bring down the morale of the rest of the family. You think Damon asked him to do that? uh, It was written after that, you know, it was right after that, you know, she couldn't even face Maelor because, you know, she she sentenced him to die. And they keep implying implying that that Maelor, like, remembers this. Which is weird. But how could he? He was two years old. He I know. I don't, I don't know if George knows what two-year-olds are like. But... <laughs> yeah, I know. Wait, wait. Guys, question. Do you think Damon ordered Blood and Cheese to ask and then kill the other one? Or do you think that was just I like... I think they were always going to kill the older son, right? I, that's the way yeah. I feel. They were always going to kill the older son. Hmm. I, I don't know if they were instructions, but uh, to me, she could... I don't know. I mean, it's like Sophie's yeah. choice, but... Uh, 
I think I that think... might have just been blood and cheese. Like they seem like uh, you know Darren's a horrible person, but he doesn't yeah. seem quite as sadistic in that sense. I think he just wanted a, an eye for an eye. I think. Whereas blood and cheese probably took for... it on themselves to be cruel. Yeah, he probably yeah. just gave the orders for the boy to die, and then they took it from there. Ugh. I, sometimes yeah. I judge George R. R. Martin. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard not to. <laughs> yeah, but Elia's murder was just as brutal, right? Um, with her yeah. son's blood and brains still yeah, on Yeah, but we head. don't get like a scene by scene, like dialogue driven, you know, recounting of Wait, it. No. I think, the description I think was pretty first. nasty. It's been a couple, it's like one to sentence though. Do, right? And one last, do we think yeah. that Damon definitely died or not? I don't give a shit. I don't know. Yeah. Damon died. Yeah, it's, I it hope seems, so. Seems but... like he made such a big deal out of like, this is a story that singers tell, but it's not history, but it seems yeah. like. It kind of seems, seems like it because he, I don't he, think he would have jumped from that. his dragon onto this other guy's <laughs> back, stabbed him with, with Dark Sister, and uh, yeah, it seems like he couldn't have got out of it. Unless he grew wings and flew away, he got yeah. crushed. And but just... anything that kills Vagar must I have been just, really deadly. Just hitting the water, just hitting the water at that velocity would have killed him. Yeah. Even being in, in the water would have boiled or... him alive. Exactly. That's now, such also, a great image. The, the, blood, yeah. the blood boiling the water, right? That's so cool. Shit. Yeah, but ouch, there were people in there. Oh. In the water. <laughs> and fish, the poor no, fish. That... <laughs> yeah, the poor fish, the true victims. <laughs> See, that, that fight, I was like, oh my gosh, thank goodness, at least there's nobody else yeah. around, like, yeah. to, you know, to die. Fish. That's like the one time they <laughs> actually decided on a place. Yeah, it's like, all right, let's decide on a place that doesn't massacre everyone around us. Let's go to an abandoned place. That's what they should have done in the first place. Yeah. I think that's like a... Do you think Bran might have something to see there? Because he's at the Weirwood every day, waiting for him. That, that, that we might get something from that. Yeah. And and the Isle That'd of the cool. the Isle of Green Green Faces yeah. need the Isle of Faces, whatever. That's in the God's Eye, right? And Correct. Yeah. The he spoke trees to the Green. Presumably, have seen what happened. Yeah. And they say Adam uh, Valerian spoke to the Green Man on the Isle of Faces. So I'm assuming that's mm-hmm. the children of the forest. Isle of Faces, right? Also, wait, another side question. Is the sea snake live? He's thrown in prison, yeah. Yeah. So, but we don't know. He's thrown in a black cell and he wasn't young. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, but we don't know when but Egon who comes out. Self- he's, he's pretty tough, though. He was alive yeah. at the end of the story. Hmm. If Bicel survived, I think the sea snake would have. Hmm. It's just like, it's so, they're so, like, you keep looking for the layers of this tragedy to, like, stop, and they don't. Yes. And it's just like, you know, the the way, you know, the whole two betrayers incident and the way um, Rhaenyra is like twisted into suspicion. And you just know, you just know from that point, it's like, okay, this is your downfall. Because like the only time you really get to cheer for her is when she takes King's Landing. And, yeah. and even that's like, that's relatively bloodless. Yeah. Like it's not, you know, it's not such a violent overtaking. Um and then it just and and when oh when Allison was like oh you will reap what you have sown I was like shut shut up shut up no okay you do not get to do that okay <laughs> yeah and when she sits the throne and when gets up and she has these scratches from the throne you know oh no See, not again I, th- <laughs> I thought that was biased by the writer me too I, I ah he, okay I felt like he made a huge deal out of that 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 couldn't have been something that he had knowledge of I don't know. Seemed, it's a seemed... throne made out of swords, people. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this was proof that she was not fit to sit the throne and all that stuff. But Eris for should a long just time and that. it was literally shredding him to bits. Right. They I guess just... the implication is that she's so nervous and fidgeting at this point. She's so paranoid that yeah. she's actually doing it to herself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think like the people were interpreting like it, as, it as an omen. Like it's it's not the fact that the Iron the Iron Throne wasn't at ease with her. It's just that she wasn't at ease on sitting on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Who was who saved Bela Targaryen from getting killed at the end? Yeah, she was taken to the maesters or something, right? Uh, yeah, but somebody stopped somebody from killing her, right? I, I yeah. Just... It. Oh God. Aegon. Aegon said we need our hostages, just like he oh. did. No, in, uh, it was a guy Aegon though. He also. grabbed. He grabbed the guy. Aegon arm. didn't stop it. Aegon was the one who wanted to kill her, I think. No, no, it was the it was the guy who was in charge of Dragonstone, the castle oh, that wanted the... to kill her, oh, and yeah. another guy yeah. caught his hand or something. Yeah. Get it. Hang on. I'll, I'll oh, the new uh, white cloak guy that uh, Aegon just made made him. 
Um, yeah, I'm trying to it find... It was so funny. It was like, it was. like, why do you even keep bothering mentioning these people? They're just dead. Like, the new, the new like, yeah. Lord Commander, yeah. who's the Lord Commander after being so, in the King of for, like, a month. It's like, and he died, and too. <laughs> Yeah. It got pretty exhausting after a while because in the Song of Ice and Fire, we get to actually know all of these people, yeah. even though there's hundreds and hundreds of names. They actually have identities and we have like a connection to them. But these are just names. These We have no connection. Hundreds and hundreds of names, many of which are the same, like Rhaenerys and Rhaenyra and Rhaella and Aemond and Aegon and Aegon the First and Aegon the Second and Aegon the Third. So it's hard to sympathize <laughs> with any of them. And without sympathy, there's no stakes in these epic battles. Mm-hmm. it's just a vacuum of, like the spectacle can't really exist in a vacuum even if it's really cool in its imagery it doesn't if there's no stakes it doesn't really matter i think the first thing that happens is when bees where gets killed so i think it's just i right from there i was kind of like ah these greens these are, they're not too good yeah. either. so yeah. i immediately started rooting for the you know for the black so it was like a team thing whenever a you know black died was bad whenever a green one died, it was bad kind of thing mm. so that's yeah. a, that's why I kind of connected it. I was like, it was like a team I was rooting for. Well, it's also yeah, it's yeah but until until blood and cheese. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It rem- they reminded me a lot of the Lannisters when they were setting up that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a really good true. representation of the power of legitimacy. Like for all mm. that we as Song of Ice and Fire fans love to talk about how like no man, the only thing that matters is your sword. Like we mm-hmm. love the Blacks entirely because they have the better claim. Why would a lord of they Westeros? Have, well, they have a better claim, and if they ha- if their claim had not been overtaken, there wouldn't have been a war. You know. That's... There you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's the greens that's that right. instigated the war. That's why we're it, against them at the beginning. Yeah, and and connected. most of the most most of the lords swore to you know um, make her queen, and then they went back on it. Presumably, the high towers swore as well. Well, yeah, I think like... the. The the promise thing happened uh, at year hundred or something or he, yeah at year hundred. But 100. still, it was so never. It's been it was, years. And... Aegon is like twenty one or twenty two, whatever, and um, obviously the king did not you know overturn it for twenty years. Yeah. That must mean something, right? It yeah. wasn't like the the son was just born oh, and yeah, he died. Yeah. I mean, the grandmaster the grandmaster confirms it, right? That the king wanted his daughter to be, uh, uh, you yeah. know, the thing. Yeah. And and the person who gets Dragonstone is always the second in line. Just like when uh, Rhaenyra became queen, she gave Dragonstone to Jace, Jace uh, and then, yeah. then eventually to Basically Joffrey. Basically, the crown prince or princess so, lives on Dragonstone. Yeah, I mean, the succession is very simple and settled. The guy who runs Dragonstone is the future king or queen. Uh, but, yeah, which is yeah. why I don't understand Stannis's, you know... Anger at Robert because, because Robert pretty not much targaryens. gave him the heirs, yeah. the but heirs the, island. But that's the Targaryen thing. In the but, in the, the Baratheon thing, Storm Sen would Robert have been. He was descended from a Targaryen. That's why he no, was but, the one no, of all true. the rebels that took the throne. But in the no, Baratheon true. line, it would Targaryen have been Storm Sen. No, Nadia's right. right. In this in this case, uh, that, seriously, if Stannis had been given had been given um whatever uh, Storm's, Storm's End, yeah. and Renly had been given Dragonstone, Stannis would have been like, "He made my little brother Prince of Dragonstone." <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, so I mean, right. Stannis- I can't I can't argue with that. I guess. <laughs> That's so right. <laughs> That might be unfair. No, and the well, thing think, was, if the Targaryens came back, if the Targaryens ever came back to Westeros, the first place they would go would be Dragonstone, yeah, which is the exactly. logical place to go. And yeah, there was actually a strategic... would not be counted on to hold Dragonstone. That would have to be Stannis. But, but Dragonstone wasn't Stannis considered... Keep, you know, and he Stannis can't keep a... both Dragonstone and Storm's End. Stannis is I a think... proven commander. He needed to be on Dragonstone to stop yeah. the, uh, exactly. the Targaryens yeah. for regaining a toehold in the Seven Kings. Thus, I technically, he was Robert the heir at the time. I think we can agree that Stannis is oversensitive, but I think we can also agree that Robert probably handled it poorly. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. But at the same time... Robert, but, you well, know, Stannis... I think Stannis maybe has interpreted, misinterpreted. Like, Robert never actually meant it as a... Or maybe... I can't remember if Cersei said, said he did mean it or he didn't mean it as an insult to put, dra- to well, put Stannis on. Because he's an idiot, so we shouldn't count on anything she says. And because Robert he could have had a... Was idiot as well. Um, yeah, but Robert was um, probably like, yo, Stannis, here's this shitty island, go have fun, and then went back to drinking, like, he wasn't going to be like... But it's not a shitty island, him. it's the seat of the, of the, of the air. Yeah. But it is a shitty island, it's poor. But, yeah, it, it is compared to, to Storm's right? It, it is compared Storm's to Storm's like the first place people land when, they, when they're planning to invade Westeros. 
No, but dance this this Dance of the Dragons novella is giving us a slightly false impression of Dragonstone, which is this like powerful, lively seat with a huge number of wealthy vassals. But like after the damage from this book, was... other civil wars, it's it's honestly it's part of it's just money. I Stannis is of... really poor because he has a shitty seat. I think it might have been a kind of port town when there was a lot more trade between Essos and Westeros, and obviously the major fleet was there, the Sea Snakes. But since then, the major fleet is now, I guess, the um, the Red Wines, and the uh, and, and the uh, Essos, the free cities aren't having as much trade, so it's kind of fallen slightly into decay as the Targaryens have receded in power. But the bottom line is, if Stannis had a better attitude. A lot of things would have been better. If both yeah. Robert and Stannis had a better attitude. Yes, yes, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not, not blaming Robert for this. I just don't think it was the wrong decision on Robert's part for once. And by the way, I happen to think Robert Baratheon is a rapist and an, and a horrible, horrible, horrible person. But in this case, I don't think he did a horrible thing by giving Stannis the thing. I think Stannis is is a well, okay, I won't say what I was just going to say, but he's born in the, <laughs> in the in the order that he's born in, and he's looking for things to be wrong in his life. And True. if he had a better attitude and was like, you know what, I really have to take over the seat and make it a Baratheon stronghold, and we're going to bring people in. If he'd been like, you know, Robert, I need a lot of people, like because of this house that you gave me, and blah blah blah, he could have he could have made it a cheerful place. But Stannis yeah, if he had made place. the case, I think he would. He would have gotten the men and the, you know, funds and whatever. Mm-hmm. I think I'm I'm he was just, you know, no sulking. He was off sulking and just he didn't bother. I mean, I he's think a, unlike... Uh, you know, he, defended it, he defended it from a military standpoint, but, you know, he didn't bring the trade back and whatever. It, 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 yeah. Stannis is the type of person to bless it. him, but, but, but if, if it was cold or raining or whatever he'd be like it's raining and somebody would be like why don't you put on your hood and he'd bet you like no but it's raining <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's yeah. like you know stannis Aren't actually there fought stannis during defendants on this podcast <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Wait, yeah where's that word <laughs> i i i yeah i really like stannis i think yeah. actually he's probably better now, uh, he's kind of the opposite of Renera. <laughs> Renera tries to win the throne and uh, she keeps losing and faltering and becomes bitter and bitter and more horrible and crueler. Whereas I think Stannis' defeats have actually humbled him and he's probably a better king now than he was at the beginning of the War of the Five Kings. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I don't hate Stannis, by the way. I definitely don't. I'm just saying. I love Stannis. <laughs> Stannis too. It's just the whole he's dragon so funny. kingdom. He's got such a dry <laughs> wit. Especially in Book Five, he's great. <laughs> Yeah, although uh, something I don't like about the whole Stannis conversation thing is that, like, once he gets away from those nasty, nasty women who control him, he gets to be his awesome self. And it's like, okay, I'm not I'm not so cool with that, but whatever. With, in he terms powers, of Sandra and Selyse. the women in his life, I don't... Right, he, he yeah. gives them a voice, and I don't. I don't think, think it's the fact that they're women that makes them nasty. No, but I'm saying nasty. from a fan's perspective, a lot of people are like, "Oh, now that he's at free from Solis and Melisandre, he can, you know, be himself." And well, like, I he's think still... he's more comfortable as a, a commander in a way. But yeah, I, he's definitely I don't... uncomfortable around women, but that doesn't stop him from betting Melisandre all the time. Right. Uh, I am. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I have. Proof for that in Melisandre's chapter. I, I don't. I don't doubt that they have sex. I just. I don't think he beds her per se. I think he does quite. Whatever. Like, or, yeah. You know, you see in book three, uh, Celise puts her hand on her his knee and he shakes her away, and then Melisandre does the same thing and he doesn't shake it away. Yeah. Of course, Celise. So I, think well, he quite likes, I think he quite likes okay. Melisandre. He's, he's sort of allured by her. Even if it, even if it's just her sort of seducing him with magic. Or yeah, something. I can like, understand why he's like, uncomfortable around Celise. <laughs> I she's very yeah. clingy that's what that's the opinion i get you know she's sort of needy and clingy and yeah i think yeah, the show I get is right. sympathetic towards her yeah but the books aren't really yeah no the books are not and it's like it's the same it's like the lysa syndrome it's like if you have a woman who's had a lot of miscarriages she doesn't get sympathy for some reason and i'm sure that's not intentional but like wow yeah but whatever. no no i should I mean, a lot of sympathy for Celise. oh sorry lysa but not Sidley's for some yeah. reason. Yeah, Lysa is definitely more sympathetic than than Sidley. I mean, we see yeah. a lot more of Lysa than Sidley's. Oh, their names sound similar. Maybe that's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So we've 
Yeah, I think uh, (laughs) Well, the minute we start talking about A Song of Ice and Fire, we know we are uh, running out of stuff to talk about. (laughs) So, uh, so shall we wind things down? Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Okay. It's been what three hours. It's been yeah. a three-hour podcast. <laughs> it's, a long. Long. Yeah. it's it's the longest one I did, I think. I mean, Glenn did the longest one, a four-hour one, but I never usually cross oh, about an hour or two hours. But this is like the longest one I did. Oh. <laughs> so, is a four-hour be okay? <laughs> no, a three-hour be okay. Be okay. Oh. Three was four hours long. <laughs> oh my god. No, <laughs> it was like one, three and a half. But yeah. First <laughs> Well, it but felt it like four hours. hours. <laughs> was, and then it was like edited down to like three and a half hours. So good luck. Maybe, maybe, you, can, yeah, maybe you can edit all the Mughal history out. So. I know, I know. Because <laughs> no, that's probably wrong. Right? I put yeah. that at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, no, but so... I was probably wrong because, yeah. yeah maybe I... they teach different things in India and in Pakistan. No, 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 not uh, the Mughal history. That was long before the whole India Pakistan. Yeah, it's a, it's okay. a common That's history. So just, a, a common that was all just India. Oh, okay, so, I, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, I think the Mughal, Mughal Empire stretched <laughs> till Pakistan, Afghanistan also, right? No, so... no, come on. What are you talking about? It ended... <laughs> but the Mughal Empire, I mean? It started the 20th century, like right at the beginning of the 20th century. What? The Mughal Empire? <laughs> yeah, Mughal... Mughal what Empire is, is like 1500, 1400 AD. Vikram, it was the War of Independence, 1857, where Bahadur Shah Zafar was, you know. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, I, I was saying Mughal, Mughal started like 8, 1400 AD or something. Yeah, yeah, they ended with, they ended at the Sepoy Mutiny, yeah. of course. But yeah, yeah. Okay, we are on the same page. <laughs> but I'm saying the border went up to like Persia or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to listen to you guys talk about it. History. Answering the real questions. Yeah, it's like, you know, is these just know more of it. Yeah. So. <laughs> this is not the first podcast I've heard you two talking about Indian history. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry lo- about that. No, I, love so much more, I like how you're so much more confident about Westerosi history than <laughs> Indian history. It's true, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> yeah. I can probably make more Targaryen kings than American presidents. Oh, so. uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so there were a lot of Mughal kings, and I can, I think, I can name around like five or six, maybe seven, maybe, but there were a lot more than that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a long line dynasty. Yeah. It's, it was the longest dynasty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And before that, I'm just blank. <laughs> we could probably do a podcast on all the historical sort of allusions throughout a song of Hazen Vaya. Yeah, we could, but that's kind of yeah. race for the. It's the whole War of the Roses. Um, the whole War of the Roses. Um, uh, you know, similarities. But like the different ethnic groups in Westeros, like the the Britons and the Anglo-Saxons and the Children of the Forest, are kind of like fairies and all this other stuff. Yeah, when they start mentioning about how the Riverlanders uh, use longbows. George is, whenever George talks about dawn, you know, he always mentions the Mediterranean. But whenever yeah. I read it, always think of South Asia, you know, because all the diversity and you know, basically skin color and and uh, you know, just um, how it differs from the sea to the mountains. Um, it, it's pretty much the same with South Asia, you know. Sure. Well, he's picking and choosing. It's not a perfect analogy. Yeah. He's just drawing yeah, bits but and pieces it, from it, it sounds very familiar. And all the spices they eat, that's very familiar. <laughs> Dornish peppers. <laughs> well, we don't eat snakes. Yeah. <laughs> snakes are delicious. Yeah. You I think our last snake dance is going to be on Dawn. Oh, okay, let's find things down. Like we keep going on. <laughs> Sorry. One more. Wait, somebody's, somebody's eaten snake. Yeah, snake oh. is delicious. Oh my! What does it taste? I'll like? eat oh. virtually anything you put in front of me. It's I don't know. It tastes like gator. It's a little bit like chicken. <laughs> oh. What does gator taste like? Um, oh, okay. It's just like gator. I eat that all the time. It's oh, alright. It's, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's sparrows a, here, okay? Sparrows. Yeah, it's a like pretty light meat kind ones? of game. There's meat okay. in sparrows. Yeah. Yeah, they no, there's not much. And their bones are like toothpicks. Yeah. The Romans <laughs> used to eat dormice. And they're like a delicacy. Yeah. <laughs> dormice used to be a delicacy in Rome. Ugh. Well, I just went to Israel and I had a lot of donuts. That was Oh uh, donuts. <laughs> are they called Pishki or are they not called Pishki? No, they're called Sufganiot. Uh, they're called I should probably know that. I am Jewish. they they call them Pishki here and they're so good. Uh, uh, Man. The donut place opens oh. in two hours. I could stay after that. <laughs> Set your alarm. Yeah. 
I was about to say I'll just wait for the sun to come up, but that's hilarious. <laughs> that won't be till like eleven. Oh my god! Wow. But the sun has been up here for like two hours now. No. Are you kidding me? It's like when did the sun come up for you, Nadia? That's not it's, fair. Uh, it's eight o'clock for her. Sunrise is, I think, at six fifty. Come so on, the sunrise here is literally eleven thirty. Oh, but you're not more, you know, in the north. Yeah, and the sun, it's like I'm the like, lands of always winter. Yeah. It's setting at four. <laughs> oh, I could. My husband that. is on this winter survival trip right now, and it's probably, you know, dark there. Many years. Yeah. It's summer so. here, so it's it's like nine thirty <laughs> at night. <laughs> I'm also. I'm very glad that I. I'm very glad that I made it back for this. I almost got, there were like lots of bridges here. And if you do it wrong, you end up stuck on the wrong side of a bridge for hours. So I almost didn't make it, but I did. And I'm very glad I did. Yay, Lee beats Russia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All clambered, of Russia. <laughs> clambered across a frozen canal. Except not actually, that would end badly. Oh, but the man. thing is, it's Sunday morning, so I can go back to sleep now. Yeah, that's the goal. All day. Who cares if I have exam tomorrow? It's yeah. Saturday night, so I'm I'm up and I don't have exams. Yay! Hooray! Mm, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's yeah. wind things down, and uh, <laughs> so uh, so the upcoming <laughs> podcast uh, there's going to be. <laughs> Yeah. Never uh, wind it down. Yeah. So so I think there's an upcoming Lord of the Rings podcast right next week. Yeah, yeah. theoretically. Twenty first. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, then and we are doing the Hobbit podcast yes. at the next year though. Yes. So the uh, final doing the final. will be after Christmas. I, it yeah. hasn't started showing here yet. I don't know. It was released, but it hasn't started showing here yet. Yeah, we don't get it till twenty sixth of March. The final feast the dance is, feast dance is soon, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, twenty eighth of it's December, I think. The last weekend in December. Yeah. You guys all have to be on because I love listening to those. Hooray! Yeah. They're very oh, good. That's my voice. We're Hooray. doing Dawn actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't I love Dawn, but whatever. <laughs> but I think we're gonna do an after show for oh, the Mary's Knot and the uh, Grand Northern Conspiracy. Oh, cool. Yeah. We Possibly. Can't do at the same, same, at the same. I don't think we can. But he's added like more chapters to the Marinese not a blot, so we yeah. might not be able to get yeah. through it all. Of it, so. <laughs> I think that'll make it again like three and a half hours long. So. I, I definitely want to do the. I definitely want to finish the Grand Northern Conspiracy because we started that last episode. Yeah, we and should do that. And there's a lot of cool. There's a lot of cool stuff in that, so we can do that for the after show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this is going to be my last <laughs> podcast ever. <laughs> oh, no. What? What? For what? the year 2013. <laughs> oh God! You tricked us. You... Yeah, I wanted to make that joke. I thought of it like Monday. <laughs> it was clearly very polished. <laughs> was the first. Days of planning and honing. See, the jokes and the timing before you say 2013. <laughs> it was carefully measured. So many layers. Oh my gosh! So oh you're my... not going to be there for uh, the last feast dance one? Yeah, Dawn is not really my thing. I'm going to be mostly complaining about stuff. So. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm going to complain about Dawn. <laughs> I'm more the gray joy guy. So. Yeah. I feel like, oh my God, Vic, no. I feel like I'm just going to be surrounded by all of you Dorn haters. <laughs> I don't hate I, 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 I like them like better Dorn. than... I'm still in the middle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like them better than the Greyjoys. I just think they're very tangential to the plot. Liking someone better than the Greyjoys <laughs> is not a ringing endorsement. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, I like them better Dornish. than Aegon. Like, the thing about the Dornish is that they just, like, they seem really exciting. So, like, from far away, it's like, ooh, what are these people up to? And then you, yeah. like, zoom down, and it's like, I'm oh, not that much, actually. Exactly. Like, they're so much more exciting when you see them. They're so much more exciting when you hear about them from the Red Viper, but when you actually go there, it's very... Uh, dry and dull and they're, they're quite inept i mean they plan this big thing and it just fails and then they plan this other thing to marry off daenerys and it fails yeah. so I, I think it is very much filler chapters he can't actually advance the plot in dawn until he catches up with um winds of winter i disagree the five, but... five year gap yeah i disagree but we should save this for the next podcast exactly. the feast dance right. don't get me wrong i like them i just i just yeah they're not as enjoyable for me as the rest of as, as like the central uh, complex yeah also, exactly i don't so see the hive yeah like the north well, you have oh, so the North many chapters focused on Ariane and her and her like ill, you know, ill-conceived story, you know, to to go. It's actually only one chapter. It's one chapter. Yeah. It felt like it was so long. <laughs> oh my gosh! Chapters? I have to reread that book. We get, we get the Soiled Knight, which is from 
what's his name's point of view? Oh, Ares. Yeah? Then we yeah. get the Ares, Ares chapter. Is... Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Wait, Ares only it had feels one like chapter? About, it feels, yeah, yeah, it dragged out, yeah. Oh. Yeah, Arian had the chapter where the audio card actually shows up and uh, does the thing, but then it was—it's usually the other guy, the white. And what knight. the heck is the point of Ario Hota? He has what, he's <laughs> such a <laughs> fly on the wall. Silence. He's the most underdeveloped yeah, exactly. character in the history of the Song of Ice and Fire. How yeah. smash! You know, he's just, These are he all things. Do it <laughs> except. He's la, like la, the bodyguard in um. <laughs> I want him to pick up the Prince Duran like Kevin Costner and like carry him away and kicking through the crowd. And stuff. <laughs> As like my heart will go on or whatever the song is, I will always love you. Um, Duncan, are you editing the job. next one, the next season of one? No? Uh, yeah, I- I'm editing it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you can cut all of this out and put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is mine. <laughs> this is mine. mine. Leave it in. Just put it in the after show. Just do a creaking door and then put it in. Yeah. <laughs> right. That creaking door I'm... was such a hilarious coincidence. Yeah. Is it good? I think I'm actually going to say goodbye and fall asleep because it's <laughs> 7.30 and I have been up for a while. Um, Sleep well, Lee. Yeah, yeah. yeah Shout out to really Nadia like... and Lee for coming on at such all yeah, hours. Like, what a yeah, very much. Great effort, off. guys. It's great to have yeah, you guys. Teamwork. Good teamwork. I'll yeah, see I have to wake up at six anyway, so it's not that much of a stretch for me. Yeah. Well, no, I you gotta make forward. us feel guilty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're making me really tired. It's ten twenty at night. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's just, it's a good enough excuse. It's just yeah. time to go to bed. All right. I'll, I'm looking forward to recording with you guys again another time. Bye. See ya. Good talk. Right, see you, mate. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye Nadia. Okay then, guys. So let's wrap it up. Then uh, thank you for coming, joining us. This. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. Oh yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you for joining us. It's it's thank been you, long yeah. due, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, Duncan. Okay, Mikhail. It's like, awesome. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, it's been wonderful. See you guys. Okay, so we have Thomas and Thomas in right now. Uh, Duncan's also in. Hello. Hi, Vic. Hello. Mikhail, Bina, Hi, Nadia. Uh, Lee's having some trouble. So, how many people is there? Uh, seven. We are one short of the record. <laughs> <laughs> is eight the record? Great. Eight the record from uh, the Thor podcast. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But that was fine. It wasn't too crazy. So. No, no, it was good. It was fun. Uh, I like I like having a big podcast. Especially this one deserves it. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. I hope Lee's not going to have trouble like he did last time. I'm sure he, I think he was frustrated. Maybe we should just be like, okay, Lee, say everything you need to say. <laughs> and then, like... <laughs> We'll just edit it throughout the podcast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we kind of have to keep telling him, hey, you cut out. <laughs> hey, you, <laughs> you guys um, uh, heard about the, you know, Kim Jong Young, or Kim Youngen, sorry, executed his uncle, right? Yeah. That's so Game of Thrones ish. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a book on it. It's going to call Dance of the Kimchi. <laughs> Some of the Actually, rivalry between. Dance of the Korean dragons. <laughs> Dance of the Kims. Oh man. Um. So I, I initially thought we'd do a few minutes spoiler free and then go spoiler fill, but come on, I mean, who who's not going to read this thing? Let's do all spoilers then. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. Yeah. People who haven't read it will probably listen anyway because it's not yeah. like spo- like it's not really. You can't really spoil it. I mean, yeah, no. yeah. Okay, True. so Lee's on. I made right? it. Yeah. I made it. <laughs> so it's the R of the wolf for Lee and the R of ninety ga- nightingale for uh, Nadia. <laughs> and, oh, wait, Nadia, what's it, what's your time yeah. zone? Uh, it's five o'clock right now in the oh, morning. It's, it's, oh, I've lost my voice. That's ideal. It's four a.m. here. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, props to you guys for making a really sh- your commitment to the cause is inspiring. Yeah. You're crazy. It's actually it's actually the hour of the duck. Actually, yeah, it's the hour of the duck. Oh, I got Vic, my ass wrong. I saw your email. 
<laughs> Where are you guys getting all this? Oh, uh, yeah. One o'clock is out of the eel. Two o'clock is out of the ghost. <laughs> eel. Three is eel. out of the wolf. Four is out of the no. Sorry, three is out of the owl. Uh, so what's the out of the bat? Uh, out of the bat is twelve o'clock or zero o'clock. Oh, okay. I thought that was what is wolf? Where I think did you four find o'clock. these out? Oh, some just from Westeros somewhere. <laughs> also, wait, who's here? Vic, Bina, Duncan, Mikhail, and Nadia. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hi. My, my hour is hour of pizza. So, <laughs> so yeah. let's see. Uh, does anybody have to run out at any time? Uh, like, uh, I think I'm thinking two hours mostly. Uh, yeah, I have a prior time. commitment at five in the morning, so I'm okay. going to have to leave. <laughs> Okay, that's in an hour, no, right? So I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I have a prior commitment at five in the morning? <laughs> Who knows? It's Russia. <laughs> I have to leave in an hour to go watch cricket, but oh, okay. you know, there's more also, than enough wait, people to carry. Bina, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> if it wasn't for Bina, I would not be here because she recorded Princess and the Queen for someone who is a relative of yours, I think. Yeah. And she sent me the book on tape so I could listen to it since my print copy is still in the US. So you get uh, to do all the pronunciations, oh. so. <laughs> okay. Uh, so anything anybody want to say anything before we get started? Um uh, nothing much, right? It will be all spoiler filled. Uh, yep, just, just Yeah, all I wanted to say Vic is I'm on this really dodgy line, so if it just oh. sounds really shit and it's compromising the quality of the podcast, feel free to just <laughs> Feel, to, feel yeah. free to just boot me off and I'll just... Oh, boy, compromise quality of a bit, okay. Sounds I fine. won't take it personally. <laughs> okay, uh, no, no, that should be okay. So, okay, let's get started. Um, uh, be prepared for the best intro ever. <laughs> Wait, do we have an order of introduction? Oh, that's okay. I need to go through my spiel first. So, oh. Okay, okay. Um, Thank you for not uh, freaking out when I was like, I want to come too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I like having a big podcast. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, I was pretty much a last minute edition as well. So. <laughs> and shout out to Sky for holding us through. I mean, every <laughs> we've been like from different yeah. corners of the world, from Sky. Australia, Russia, us in the US, is... and Pakistan in the middle. So, it's awesome. Yeah, I think this must have been the most crazy one yet, <laughs> scheduling yeah. wise. Yeah. yeah. Sky is like Vega. It's gonna go down. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking BMS. This guy is Roderick the Ruin. <laughs> it's on the green. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna chop it off there or something. Uh, right. Orange the bat. <laughs> <laughs> you keep trying to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's gonna. That's where I'm gonna cut cut the thing. So it's fine now. Uh, now you guys can talk. Oh, sorry, Vikram. <laughs> Uh, okay. It's like 190 MB. <laughs> well, good luck editing, editing it. Yeah. Oh Thanks. yeah. If it's something this big, I'm just gonna keep it as raw as possible. Are you can edit it. Gonna... Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I can okay. take care of this, of course. Uh, yeah. Do you have a good song to put in the end? <laughs> yeah, don't She's do well, um, Actually, we've been starting to put stuff up on YouTube, right? And YouTube is really picky about copyright stuff. Uh, oh, like Duncan, yeah. it flagged the the song we you put in for the Fight yeah. Club, and I went. Yeah, and I only put in like 45 seconds of Lonely Mountain in the Hobbit thing, and it caught that also. But luckily, it just said confirm it's a third party thing, and I did, and it did not remove it. But with Star Wars, it blocked it. Star Wars, I had to actually delete it off because it wasn't let me going to let me put it. So, well, I think what's the YouTube account? Do you okay? Vassals of Kings. Oh yeah, yeah, on YouTube. So, okay. I I think I if you can. This will be a good one to put on YouTube because there probably aren't many yeah, discussions. So exactly. if people are looking on YouTube for discussions of Princess and yeah, the Queen, that's they'll why find I want to keep it as, uh, you know, no, no copyright stuff. Probably just put yeah. the Passes of King's Grave long song at the end. Well, you can put a the, song uh, at the end for the podcast and then upload uh, it, just a, a raw I, version for the, for the YouTube. Yeah, I mean, by song, oh, well, I don't want to do two copies. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, all right. <laughs> I mean, I put something from HBO, right? Some Ramin Jawadi thing. Uh like one a Danny theme or something. I was gonna suggest maybe it's copyrighted, but what's that song from Terminator like burning at the third degree or something? Uh, <laughs> it's, I've been, yeah. I watched Terminator a couple of weeks ago. It's such an awesome song. 
But that's all right. You do what you want. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Guys... Keep it copyright free as much as I can. You know. I mean, like, leave it up to you guys if you want to do it. Put it, but it probably won't go on YouTube. Then that's all. Now this is a good one for YouTube. So yeah, just like yeah. So copyright. keep it clean. Do you guys know the um the new song from the the Hobbit CD or the second Hobbit CD, the I See Fire? No, no, I haven't listened to it. So it's a great, great song, and I was like listening to it, and it's a lot about everything burning up, obviously, because of <laughs> you know smog. But I was thinking like, oh, is you know, I, 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 my brother listened to it also, and I was like, do you think this would make like an interesting like Song of Ice and Fire song? And then I was like, you know what? Never mind. It couldn't because it's very like about camaraderie and brotherhood, and like <laughs> we will all die together. And it's like, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't fit. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Have you guys seen Hobbit 2 already? No, not yet. I heard it's, no. I heard it's better than the second, the first one. So I don't want to see it. I'm gonna go see it tomorrow. So. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna see it tomorrow. I mean, I haven't. Yeah, seen I it finally, yeah. I finally saw Thor like last week, in the middle of last week. You mean Hobbit one? Finally. So no, Thor. Oh, Thor! It okay. came out like a month ago. Ah. <laughs> I hear when you have kids, you can never see movies. That just doesn't happen. No, but see, what we I get movies really late. Um, Thor released, I think, um, November. And then mm-hmm. it goes like three weeks after the about two, yeah, three weeks it, after. It's it's same in India too. It's because the tickets are cheaper, right? Here we pay eight bucks a ticket. That would be like 400 yeah, Indian like, rupees or 500, 500 Indian rupees at least. Um, and no, probably... 500. No, that's, that's expensive. I paid like 500. That's $5. Uh, but 500 <laughs> is like $10. Well, Indian well, rupees. Yeah, what I mean here, here, a movie is like eight bucks, but in India we probably pay like hundred rupees or two hundred rupees for a movie if it's like four bucks. That's what I meant. You know, it's cheaper, so they probably I don't know. <laughs> I wish rupees that's... were the international currency. Yeah, I was so much I, cooler than dollars. I, I first time like played Zelda. Zelda. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. played Zelda <laughs> for the first time last week and was like, wait, rupees. <laughs> and every time rupees? you pay, it makes that little ding noise. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you want to go ahead with the seventh attempt? Oh no, it's already ended. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good because I was thinking, you know, wait. I'm st- I'm still no, recording. Still <laughs> where, I, where we did our thank yous, bye bye bye. That's I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna. Okay. Chop. Oh, okay sure. And I'll since this is all kind of good. good stuff, I'll just put it in the after show like Amin does. Yeah. Nobody's gonna listen this far. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> oh no, yeah, that's, because that's... I would be listening if I was just listening to this. I yeah, listening. I I listen to stuff all the way. I would be listening to yeah. so. I listen till the iPod clicks off every podcast. <laughs> yeah, but at least you can do stuff while that's happening. Like like I listen to a lot of stuff while I'm driving. So you know, I have Mimi being like, oh. nobody's listening to this, and I'm like, Mimi, darling, I'm still 20 minutes away from home. Of course, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I listen to everything at work because I have nothing to do at work. So <laughs> this is what I do. Yeah, yeah. Podcasts are the best. <laughs> yeah, it's not like playing Diablo or something very grindy game. Uh, having a podcast <laughs> in the background is best. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> racking up skill points. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. From somebody who does not play video games, so I totally relate yeah. to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I listen to podcasts also when I do laundry, so... <laughs> Yes. I think the second video game podcast is going to be released soon. It's the Mass Effect one. But yeah, Katie, she's Katie's editing, had trouble it, right? editing. Yeah. yeah. No, she said she finished on the last, on the Alien podcast. She said she's just finished, so that should be out soon. Yeah. Is there a Dragon Age one, or is it just? Uh... Yeah, that's that's going to be recorded soon. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So slowly getting some video game podcasts to the to the vassals of King's Grove Pantheon. <laughs> yeah, we're down to this will be the forty sixth one. So wow. I can't believe we've almost got fifty that's episodes. Great. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the first time we're doing really the best like... okay episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you this is it's been a while since you come on, right, Nadia? Your last yeah, one was so, the round yeah. table one for books in October. Yeah, I think so, so. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. It's been that long, really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I remember me and Vikram just talking and talking and talking about <laughs> Ethan. It was just yeah. <laughs> and and the one one was based on Sipoy mutiny also. So we were talking about this exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I eventually got around to you know uh, sacrificing a goat. Um, yeah. So. so basically, the whole thing was I butchered a whole goat by myself. <laughs> you did. I was, 
trim about in great detail. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. No, I, I think I, I, I pulled actually, the feathers know, off of a teddy bear, the... bear once. <laughs> <laughs> But that was an experience. That was an interesting experience. I'll bet. So you're like so Tywin that... Lannister now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do the same thing? Did you have your son and say, "Oh, remember legacy"? <laughs> yes. Oh. As you were skinning a goat, yeah. turning to your son. I wasn't actually there when my husband actually, you know, pulled the knife. But I did the rest. Ah, so. okay. yeah. I did all the hard work. <laughs> he did all the. Is there a goat sigil? Oh no, that'd be um uh, the Vargo uh, Hoe. Oh, yeah, Vargo Hoe. Yeah. 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 Well, technically, it wasn't a goat. It was a sheep. Are there any sheep sigils? Yeah, bronze. Sheep sigil. Bon- the small folk. That's their sigil. I think is a sheep. <laughs> yeah, that's like the small folk. I think the loser house, right? Uh, oh well, then middle finger. What was no middle finger was the mockingbird, uh, and then the, no, the giant, giant for that. Yeah, okay. Bravos. Oh, sorry, that's his personal sigil. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Mockingbird? Okay, he's Katniss then. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> a day. Oh. oh, I hate little it's things. That's like so Katniss. Bad. I see it now. Yeah, I see it in games, and the first time the Mockingbird came, came and I was like, why? Why little fingers thing? Why? <laughs> well, I gotta go get something to eat, guys. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks again for having me. Okay, Thomas. Thanks, Thank you for coming Thomas. on. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, man. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then, guys. See you later. All right. All right. Good night, you guys. Yeah. Or good morning. Or whatever it is. It's <laughs> afternoon <Okay>. here. <laughs> it's only 7.30 here, so. Uh, it's yeah. Sunday afternoon. I'm in the future. Yeah, and hopefully I could probably edit it tonight. I'll try at least. Yeah. So it's on by tomorrow morning for you guys. Or tomorrow. Okay, Duncan, Duncan, I but... saw that lemon cake picture. And I need the recipe for that. It looks <laughs> amazing. I posted it on my um. I've got like a sort of another another blog on WordPress. It's just valkyrus.wordpress.com oh. if you want to go check it out. I just post because I'm making some oh. video essays on YouTube, so I post them and links to the podcast and stuff. Oh, great! Um, because that cake looked heavenly. <laughs> it's called a lemon yoga cake. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I need to make that. It's sweet, um, though. <laughs> Rist, by the way, I listened to your uh, meta narrative in Game of Thrones, and I felt so smart by understanding like, <laughs> some of it. And I was like, I was like, I didn't even know what a meta narrative was, and I was just like, oh yes, yes, Ooh. yes. Oh, of stroke course. your chin. <laughs> yeah, you. Can- I agree. You made me feel a lot smarter than I. Yeah, no, I don't worry. I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure what half of the terms mean either. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what postmodernism mean. I'm just yeah, just going off other people's writing. Yeah, you had like 50 views of that on YouTube. This is a really so... good episode. Yeah, so, yeah this is a really good episode. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Considered well, I was doing it anyway, was... so I just thought I'd record it because it was ten sort of slightly related to some of us. But... I sort of regret that I, I I graduated from college like in in like the black my personal black space in song of ice and fire because like after feast came out i read like some of it and hated it and then i just kind of forgot so i was in college in like 2008 2009 and i was an english major but like i didn't do anything about song of ice and fire because it wasn't like in in my wheelhouse at that point so i kind of i kind of regret that now well that was just kind of a one off like one the one time you get to choose your own research project but um yeah but I did another one I released another one like at the start of the week on um Fight Club if anyone is interested in that movie it's a similar kind of talk on sort of philosophy and stuff in in that movie No that was really good I mean I saw I, I saw the movie completely differently and I see the com- movie completely differently now uh after the podcast so that's good <laughs> Yeah it's it's an interesting movie it used to be one of my favorite it's gone down a bit in my estimation but I think uh-huh. it's still got a lot of cool stuff in it yeah <laughs> So can't wait for your assessment on Thor too <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, so much to talk about in Thor. Uh, and Transformers 2 and 3 text. also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, man. All right, you guys. Okay. I'm, I'm going to uh, go watch YouTube. Okay, I'm ending the call now. Yeah, I think my cats are going to kill me now if I don't feed them. <laughs> Eighth time for Charm. <laughs> do, it for, do it for the dragons. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Oh, yeah, I got that. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I got a kitten a couple of weeks ago, Aww. and we knew it was a black kitten, so I was gonna name it Balerion. 
<laughs> but yeah. then it turned out to be a female, right. so I ended up naming her Arya. Uh, oh, you should have named her Moon Dancer. Yeah. Well, Arya's gonna walk. Yeah, into but the, she's. Into the yeah, but she's. You know, she's literally underfoot all the time, so the name fits. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Yeah, there'll be a picture soon on the forums as soon as my husband comes back and takes a picture. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. Cool. All right. So okay, you okay, guys. Then. Oh no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay. Sorry, it's Sunday morning and I have nothing else to do, so. <laughs> okay, here we go. Three, two, <laughs> one. one.